Hey, great friends. What's going on? Today is Tuesday. It's May 3rd. This is Kaplan and crew, and we come to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Hey, Alex, you're going to love this. I spoke to the folks from Seven Mile Casino yesterday. They're putting all the finishing touches on the Supper Club. I will just announce the date right now. It's June 2nd. It's a Thursday night. And I know that can be a little complicated because it's right around graduation season. My daughter's actually graduating the next day, June 3rd. But my father, who's coming in from Florida, darling, my father, who's talking to everybody inside the YouTube chat, they're like, hey, why don't we do this supper club when you're out here? So my dad's like, can you do it while I'm out there? I'm like, yeah, you know what? I think I can. It's Thursday, June 2nd, 6.30, Seven Mile Casino. Details coming. How about that? Sound good? Nice. Very good. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, let me talk to you about a few of our great sponsors, and I'll make this relatively quick. First, let me start off with iThrive MD. I was talking about having this past weekend been down at iThrive and uh, gotten an IV lounge. Well, I got an IV at the IV lounge. Here's what Ra Kel Gay, DJ Gay's wife, sent me. She said, there's a Mother's Day deal we're doing for Kaplan and crew listeners. So if it's your mom, if it's your wife, if it's your girlfriend, here, listen to this. 50% off of your IV when you purchase Botox or filler for Mother's Day and wives. So in other words, you, sir, get 50% off your IV when you buy Botox or filler for the moms or the wives in your family. Just use the code Kaplan to book. Okay. My last name, Kaplan. So, uh, 858-240-1497, 858-240-1497. If your wife or your girlfriend's been talking about Botox or fillers, um, not everybody talks about this stuff, but a lot of people do it. Um, you get 50% off your IV. Use our promo code Kaplan. Hit the phones today, everybody, because uh, I Thrive MD is a great partner of ours. And uh, you want your wife and your girlfriend to look as beautiful as she can and uh, take care of her. Take care of her. 50% off when you use the promo code Kaplan. All right, let me keep going. This Saturday, between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m., Alex, by the way, great job of putting this out on social media. This upcoming Saturday, many of you have said to me, I'm very interested in an e bike but I've not ridden one yet. And I'd like to ride it before I buy it. So rather than go to rideoneup.co slash great friends and buy it, get it, assemble it, and then ride it for the first time, I'd actually like to demo it. Well, guess what? We're going to do the same thing. We're going to all demo them together. This Saturday at 415 Laurel Street, 415 Laurel Street, downtown San Diego, Balboa Park, we're going to have a test riding demo day with our friend Daniel Urbino from Ride One Up. So we're going to be there from 10 in the morning till one in the afternoon. There's a three hour window. Come on by test ride a ride one up e-bike. And once you do it, you're going to love it. And then you're probably not going to buy one, but you're probably going to buy two because right now the limited or the core five model, they're going to take off an additional $150. And right now the limited is already marked down $200 in the spring sale. So you have a great opportunity to save a lot of money. And not just buy one e-bike, but buy one for you and your wife, one for you and your girlfriend. Maybe this is your Mother's Day gift. Rideoneup.co slash great friends. Please mark your calendars, guys. Saturday morning, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., me, Alex, and Browner will all be down there throughout that three-hour period um, so we can all do a demo day with Ride One Up. So mark your calendars for that. And lastly, let me mention our friends at Mazda of Escondido, mazdaofescondido.com. I want to mention them because... Uh, I told the story yesterday, Jason and Vicki Finley on Saturday, they were out car shopping. They wound up connecting with Alan, the general manager. I hooked them all up and they walked out with a brand new Mazda. Many car dealers are having a hard time getting in stock. And um, most of these cars, when they come off the truck, they're already sold. So if you're looking for a brand new Mazda product, believe it or not, Mazda of Escondido has a full inventory and you're ready to go in, buy, lease, what have you, and drive off that afternoon. So Mazda of Escondido, Mazda of Escondido.com. We'll talk more about other great sponsors as the afternoon goes on, but let's start the show. Hey, great friends. What's going on? Today is Tuesday. It is May 3rd. This is Kaplan and crew, and we come to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. Hey, Grande, Brown Man, um, yesterday I was on a call with our friends from Seven Mile Casino, and we have officially set the date. It's June 2nd. That is the first ever Kaplan and Crew Supper Club. 
So mark your calendar now. Details will follow as the week goes on. But I talked to our friends over at Seven Mile Casino. Alex, I was telling them that before you became such a big radio and television star, you mm -hmm. were at one time a server at Sammy's Woodfire Pizza. And obviously now there's Sammy's Restaurant and Bar inside Seven Mile Casino. So when I was talking to them and we were talking about designing the menu, I said, hold on. Let me get Grande involved here in designing the menu because I want his feedback. I, I want Grande really to handle the menu for our first yeah. ever supper club at Seven Mile Casino. Something I could easily do. I was a superstar at Sammy's too, by the way. Before you, not just a radio superstar. I was a Sammy superstar. You know, I was everywhere I've been. It's like superstar. Yeah. He's also a bartender at Sammy's. Mm -hmm. Kind of manager at Sammy's. Mm -hmm. And then I started working for you and I kind of bailed on them. <laughs> you went from Sammy's <laughs> to Scotty's. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, a long time ago. I know, but I told the, the person I was on the phone with yesterday, her name's Danielle, by the way. And I said, Danielle, listen, I want like a family style. You know, I don't want a buffet. She's like, oh, no, Sammy's won't do a buffet. Forget it. She was in Sammy's really prides themselves on that family style. So I'm like, Alex is going to handle the menu. He's going to know exactly what We're salads to order. We're not doing a order. preset menu? We are. We are, but it'll be more like the way you ordered it for everybody. So if you decide we're going with a salad and we're doing those slider burgers, I mentioned the Gargans. Again with the salads. Browner, lots of people eat salads beside you. There ain't no salad, man. No, people do eat salads. You, you ain't order it, but you don't eat it. No, you and Louis Escobedo. You're the only two people that don't eat salads. My brother. Yeah. So, Alex, um, I told her, I said, I said, Danielle, look him. Um, Alex can handle the ordering um, in advance because we'll, we'll have we're well, going to have 30 people at the table because you know how Browner said he likes that we could sell 30. Out. Well, yeah, because you know how we have 20 people coming for lunch this Friday at Tavern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I figured we would expand it for dinner. Mm -hmm. you know? so but we're not how going, we can get sold right, out. Right. We're not going Large from dinner. We're not going from 20 to 50. We're going from like 20 to 30 because you got to mm -hmm. understand something. The lunch at Tavern this Friday sold out so fast that they were asking me, they're like, do you want us to add more seats? And I'm like, no, it's, it's a supply and demand thing. You know what I mean? Let's make sure that the demand is high and the supply is low and let's sell this sucker out, which we did. And then for dinner, I figured instead of 20 people, we'd do 30 people. That's okay. not a good idea. Yeah. And then it sounds like an idea. The next thing has 40 people. That <laughs> not a good right. one, just an idea. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Well, I yeah, said, I, but I was saying to Danielle yesterday, I was like, listen, I like Alex can handle all the ordering. We'll have lots of salads on the table. We'll have lots of pizzas on the table, the slider burgers, browner. Don't worry. No, I, you're doing, I got, you are doing family style. Yeah. Totally family style. I hate that. I really? hate family style. I hate with a passion. I hate family style. Why? I hate it. Why? I like my food. Yeah, but I want, I think what they want is they want everybody to try lots of different things from their menu. Yeah, I know. But, but I yeah. hate family style, mm -hmm. style meals. Yeah. How about you, Brown? Well, I don't really I have more have of a, a problem with that than salads. That's for sure. I, I, my only thing is I don't like other people touching my food. Mm -hmm. And so when you invite uh, uh, 30 people, the family style dinner mm -hmm. it assumes that they're gonna put all the chicken in one basket and everybody don't always use the tongs <laughs> well dude there's gonna be lots of different regions in the table you know there'll be chicken wings and salad and slider burgers and pizzas and everything over here and then there'll be the exact duplicate over here and then more down here I mean, plenty of food for everybody nobody's gonna touch your food i'm the mayor of wing town i don't i, I don't make me regular don't make me regulate mm -hmm. i don't want somebody to just wants y'all can have salad veal Y'all can have soup and salad veal all y'all want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they still have it. They did have a nice lobster bisque when I worked there. Oh, really? Yeah. Want that? What the hell? What's my, lobster bisque? You know bisque? what? I might just make Browner eat things that he would never eat. Right. If I'm choosing the menu, I might choose things. Like, there won't be any chicken on that don't table. Don't do that. Don't do that. I like how Browner that? asks the question, what's lobster Duck bisque? Duck tacos. Well, lobster like, lobster bisque. bisque is so exotic. Like, ooh, what is that? Lobster that bisque. Sounds, that sounds like a thing. Soup. You can get it in a in a can somewhere. Yeah, soup sure. day it is. Soup day it is. Soup. One commercial. Not everything is soup. There it is, huh? No, it was really more of a. Uh, it was an SNL bit with Justin Timberlake. Soup I day just, it is. Soup lobs, day lobster it is. Sounds like it's got lobster in it. Uh, a little it does. bit. A little bit. Sometimes. A little bit of lobster. If you have a good lobster biscuit, it should have lobster in it. Mm -hmm. I've had lobster bisque where you're like, yo, where's the lobster? This is just orange here. It's just bisque. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you guys, bisque. You guys sold me lobster bisque, but there's really like little shrimps in there, you know? 
Right. Come it's on. like the imitation crab in here. Yeah. Hey, oh. speaking of food, let me tell you guys a quick story and let me get your, your feedback on something. So early this morning, I had to drive my 15 year old daughter, Julia, to the um, DMV in Poway to take her driver's permit. Test. Aren't they appointment only? Yeah, we, we'd made an appointment. Okay. For 8 a.m. in the morning. The written so, test. The written test, right. Got That's it. where you saw Celio. That you are exactly right. That is precisely where I ran into big sills last time I was out there, you know? And so I don't remember that. Yeah. So and I was there getting my daughter Jaden her driver's license that day, as a matter of fact. This is my younger one. This is she's 15 and she's getting her driver's permit. Which, by the way, I'll I'll give you the headline right away. She failed the test. Okay. Nice. Kids <laughs> been studying and studying and studying on apps, passing, 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 goes there, freaks out, fails the test. Runs into a little girlfriend of hers there at the same time. She texts her afterwards. She goes, that was so ridiculous and so hard. And her girlfriend was like, yeah, I failed. Julia's like, yeah, I failed too. What? So I said to my daughter, I go, you know. I failed my first written driver's test. Yeah, I've never son, failed the driver's there's test. Three, I've there's never three, failed the written test. There's three versions of it. At least this is when I was getting it. There's yeah. three versions of the written test when you're trying to get your permit. I got my hands on all three versions, and I just studied that. Mm -hmm. And then the next time I got 100%. Yeah, How about well, you just study the, just read the book. The it's answers not. are literally on the, they're in there, bro. I You're describing studying to everybody right now. Yeah, dude, I have a, I have a 15 year old <laughs> daughter who's got straight A's in school. She took like a million of these practice tests and she got there and she failed it. So I don't really care that Psych she failed. yourself out with the practice test. The it's practice. a weird vibe. It's a weird vibe at the DMV too. When you're taking a written test, yeah. I don't, I don't listen as someone who failed the first time. I feel her mm -hmm. feel it. I, and she told me how many of her friends failed it. And I was like, what? They failed the written test? Come on. How hard could it be? And she Harder failed it. Driving. She failed it. So I, I have to schlep her out there. We leave my house at like 7 in the morning. It's legit 30 miles to get there. I don't know why we booked a reservation there. It's got to be a DMV closer. Yeah, Poway's uh, so inland. The Poway DMV is so inland. I know. And and I so we get there. And she takes the, and by the way, it, let me tell you, getting a kid ready for a test like this, you got to find her social security card. You got to find the birth Ooh. certificate, a passport. I got to have a bill that shows my proof of, of where I live. I'm like, bills, nothing comes in the mail anymore. It's all electronic. So it just does a whole headache. So to schlep all the way out to Poway this morning from where I live, and then to have her fail, like in my mind, this is, this is like the sick mind of a parent. My goodness, it took like $20 of gas to get here, $20 of gas to get back. And now I got to wait eight days to go all the way back. I mean, this is this is ridiculous how much gas this requires. But on the way back, I dropped her off at school. OK, and I was so hungry this morning. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to stop and grab something to eat, something I never get to eat. All I want is just a regular old McDonald's Egg McMuffin. Just Ooh. an Egg McMuffin. That's okay, all. Now we're talking. Now talking we're Browner's language. Now, now. Menu. you talk to me, Pimpin. Alex, when was the last time you had an Egg McMuffin? Well, I don't actually like the egg at McDonald's. I would always just get like the sausage McMuffin. Yeah. Uh, and that's been, I don't know, man. Ever since before I we started working from home, for sure. Okay. Brown, last time you've had a breakfast sandwich at McDonald's? Yesterday, bro. What are you doing? What'd you have? <laughs> the day. Two sausages, egg and cheese McMuffins. Okay, very good. I'm glad you did this. So then hold on a second. Alex, it's take still a... two for five. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Is it two for five for two sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffins? Yeah, man. Did you fall for the trap and get one for seven dollars? I didn't you see. Got, okay. Did you get the meal? No, no. Here, okay, here's the deal. You ready? So yeah. I I I all I want is an egg McMuffin. I don't want the hash brown. I don't want coffee. I don't want soda. I don't want orange juice. I don't want any of that nonsense. I just want an egg McMuffin. That's it. Something I'm going to crush in like four bites. That's it. Right. So I go up to the McDonald's and I, I get on the thing and I go, Hey, um, can I please have, and I decide at the last second, can I have two egg McMuffins? And she says, um, do you want the meal? And I said, no, I don't want the meal. Cause I don't want the hash browns. I don't want the soda. I don't want the orange juice. I don't want coffee. None of it. I just want two egg McMuffins. All right, Alex, how much would it cost? for two Egg McMuffins at McDonald's. Take a guess. I literally just two for five. Okay, two for five. Okay, but but now those are sausage McMuffins that are available two for five, not regular Egg McMuffins. Two sausage and Egg McMuffins at McDonald's should not cost you, in my opinion, if you're spending more than 650 you're getting gypped. For two, right? For two. Okay. 
All right, Browner, you clearly Browner know knows exactly what happened here. All right, all right, Browner, exactly take a guess happened at what happened. Here. Take a guess at what happened. So what happened was you ordered these things individually. So you paid for both of them individually minus the meal. And so you basically paid between four twenty five and four fifty for two of these things, which the Each. person who works there should have told you if you get sausage, egg and cheese McMuffin, it's five dollars for two of them. Okay, so so so, so I didn't see there's a you. difference between hold on, there's a difference between sausage egg McMuffin and sausage egg and cheese yes. McMuffin. Yes, vast difference. Vast and difference. the one and unlike Scott's childhood, the one with cheese is cheaper. Yes, because it's the most popular one. So this so is they're basically so goading you into buying this particular one and not very, anything other than that. All right, so so I never I never saw on the menu, never saw on the menu. Two sausage McMuffins for five dollars. Never saw that. Sausage, egg, and cheese. Yeah, right. sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffin. Okay. Which, by the way, is like my favorite egg McMuffin sandwich. But I did not want a sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffin this morning. I wanted a regular egg McMuffin, and the reason for that is, is because the sausage patty on a sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffin is a very, very greasy thing. And so I you didn't just want wanted that. the bit, the 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 English muffin, and egg and, and cheese. cheese, and the and the Canadian bacon. Canadian, okay. That's why you see. That's what you get. What? That's what you get. I'm glad they overcharged you. Well, wait a second. You don't even know what my story. Is <laughs> I yet. had no idea that these were two different things. I just they are. They are sausage. They are very egg different. I had no idea there was egg McMuffin. I'm not lying. I had no idea there was egg McMuffin with Canadian bacon. I had no idea McDonald's well, had Canadian. But bacon. that's what they've called it forever. They've always called it Canadian bacon. Most yes. people are like, "What is Canadian bacon? It's ham." Yes. No, I know what it is. I had no idea. I had no idea McDonald's did that. I thought it was sausage only. No, no. How no, much no. Are we talking, player? No, no. How much they Listen, get you for? I just want to make things real clear here. The okay. the the very first egg McMuffin that McDonald's served before yeah. they went into all these variations was egg, cheese, Canadian bacon, aka ham, on an English muffin. That's an original egg McMuffin. Did okay. not know that. Okay. I knew that. So I order and I say I'd like to have two egg McMuffins, please. They put up on the screen. Your order, $12 mm -hmm. and five cents. Yeah. $12 and it's $6 for an egg McMuffin. So now I'm like, that doesn't seem right. Five look, seventy for each one. I look on the menu. You ready? There's a, there's a two sausage egg and cheese McMuffin meal <laughs> for $8 and 50 cents. Yeah. So let, let me get this straight. This is what I said to the girl. I go, let me get this straight. <laughs> <laughs> two egg McMuffins. wait now you're now you're complaining to the girl like she said the price no no i'm not complaining to her i'm just trying to figure out and i'm asking her for her help. The logic I'm, I'm just trying to say hey look hi so i notice that there's the two sausage egg and cheese mcmuffin hash brown coffee meal for 850 and i only want the two breakfast sandwiches and mine's 12 dollars. so let me do the number eight with an egg mcmuffin oh no 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 can't do that can't do that because the number eight is a sausage egg and cheese McMuffin. And what you want is a regular egg McMuffin. And so we won't replace the sauce. So now think about this. The two sausage egg and cheese McMuffins, hash brown and coffee, eight fifty. Two mm -hmm. regular egg McMuffins, twelve dollars and five cents. Yeah. 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 So I pull up to the window and she said, um, OK, there was a little confusion over there at the, you know, when I'm talking to the drive through thing. What exactly is it you want? I'm like. I would really like the two egg McMuffins, but why am I paying $12 for two egg McMuffins when I could pay $8.50 for two sausage egg and cheese McMuffins, hash browns, and a coffee? And she said, because that comes as a meal. What you want doesn't come as a meal. You're getting the combo package. You're getting the, you're getting the combo yeah, deal. You're that guy in the drive through this morning? Hey, bro, listen to me. <laughs> um, I, I wanted what I wanted, but I really didn't want to get overcharged for it. And there had to have been an alternative. There had to have been a better way to order it to save the $4. And it's not that the $4 is what's really bothering me. It's the idea of being gouged rather than having an opportunity to get it cheaper. A multi-billion dollar corporation gouging an American? No, no way. Never. And, and, here, and here's the deal. I, I never saw two sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffins for $5. But I did see the sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffin meal for $8.50. But instead... 
All I wanted was the regular Egg McMuffin. Isn't there like a value meal now too? Can, mm -hmm. Aren't these things like a dollar sometimes? No, no, nothing's a dollar anymore. I think it's nothing, 205 okay. at, at best. Sorry. But dude, Sorry. but I, I don't understand. So, so I wound up ultimately I saying, you know what, man? I want two Egg McMuffins. I don't want hash browns because I'll eat them and I don't want them. I don't want Coke because I, I don't want to drink soda with all the sugar in it. I don't want any more coffee. I don't want to burn my mouth. I don't want orange juice. I don't want the acid reflux. All I wanted were two Egg McMuffins. So did you the, get them or did you like drive away no, angry? No, no, final analysis. Final analysis. What I did was I said, screw it. I don't care. I want the two Egg McMuffins. I want the Canadian bacon. No, I did want the egg, Canadian bacon. I, I wanted, know. I want. Yeah. That's what I said. I want the Canadian bacon. $12.00. And five cents, twelve dollars and five cents for two original egg McMuffins, standalone, no hash browns, no soda, no orange juice, no coffee, just two standalone regular egg McMuffins, twelve dollars and five cents. When I could have gotten the two sausage egg and cheese McMuffins and the hash browns and the coffee for four dollars less. Yeah. Yeah, it's also a better sandwich. Yeah, without even having the Canadian bacon one, I already know it's a better sandwich. You it, just put yourself in is... a. You sound very coastal elite right now, sir. Why? Because you went to McDonald's, a place where it literally is what it is, and wanted to alter their prices. It literally, in their menu structure. is what it it's not is. That I, it's not that I wanted to alter their prices. I just felt like there must be a smarter way to order what I want. It because is because because why am I getting two egg McMuffins? For four dollars more than what I could have gotten two sausage egg and cheese McMuffins, and I could have gotten the hash browns, and I could have gotten that, the coffee. Did you ever think that ham is more expensive than sausage? Never thought about that, and I just didn't want the sausage because the sausage is so greasy that what I know You're, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to eat it, and I'm going to immediately need to pull over and go to a bathroom somewhere. But your argument makes sense, but you assuming that all things are equal, but they're not. But they're you, not. But clearly. don't you think? Don't you think that the sausage egg and cheese McMuffin, if it's eight fifty for the meal, that they could replace it with just a regular? No, because it's McMuffin? not. You're not replacing sausage for sausage. You're replacing sausage for something that's probably premium on their menu. Right. I don't think so, man. Ham is way harder to store than ground than, than that, those little patties. Those that they frozen you know? patties that have been frozen for a month before you even eat them. Right. Before you, before you eat that patty, it's mm -hmm. been through a lot. That ham has go, to be taken much ever, better care of because it'll spoil like, faster. Okay, uh -huh. here's something. How about this? You ever go to a Chili's? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you, and I'm gonna go to another American Cornerstone restaurant here. Chili's. My dog's over there. What's up? Shout Love out you guys. Chili's. I'm a fajita man at Chili's. Mm -hmm. Fajitas mm -hmm. for chicken. Fajitas is about twelve dollars. Mm -hmm. If I want shrimp, it's about seventeen. Mm -hmm. Now, why can't I replace shrimp for chicken? Like that's what you're. That's what you are arguing. Um, I understand what you're saying, but I think shrimp. I think of as being a more expensive deal. Right. You than think chicken. of it. The way McDonald's thinks of ham as more than right. Sausage. Ham is shrimp at McDonald's. I'm just kind of trying to compare your thought process. Yeah, I got you. Into, that's no, you're making. So a, I get your. You're complaint. making a solid point. I just, I, it just, it just occurred to me though. Why it? My complaint is not the sausage for the ham. My complaint is is that the sausage egg and cheese McMuffins come with the hash brown and the coffee. I don't want the hash brown and the coffee. So why am I paying four dollars more for two sandwiches? When Not I can get two right. sandwiches, the side because, and the drink. Browner because just told you you can get two sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffins for five dollars. Never saw that. Never saw that at right. the McDonald's so in Del Mar. Traditionally, what mm -hmm. McDonald's considers a value is what they've studied that people eat the most. And so right. this sausage. is this is now the value as opposed to what you want, which isn't that high up on the menu. So you got to pay regular price for that. This thing that they we may only know have everybody like eats. slices of ham. Yeah. At any given time, maybe we're like, hey, we're gonna run out if we charge. Five dollars for these things. It's amazing because the 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 the. It's amazing because sausage is so much better than Canadian it, bacon. It dude. is, but it's also very very greasy, and I didn't want the grease. It's not a real. <laughs> You're meat. at McDonald's, dude. I know, yeah. I know. At that point, you throw grease and stuff out the window. Well, that's why you? I didn't want the hash brown. <laughs> I didn't want all that extra grease. I didn't want yeah. all that extra fried nonsense. Ugh, this is like the most first world problem ever. discussion we've ever had. Yeah. Ever. Above all time, mm -hmm. this is like first world problem. Yeah.
It's a pain in the ass. All right, listen, let me say this. Um, as we're just getting rolling here today, since we're talking about food, shout out to our people from West Coast BBQ, westcoastbbqshop.com. Brian Bushfield and his team, congratulations. Outstanding job this weekend. You know, these guys are also competitive chefs. Not only are they selling grills and seasonings and sauces and accessories, they're also legitimately competitive chefs. And they crushed it this weekend up in, I think they were in Lodi, California. So they were up there doing their thing. West Coast BBQ Shop, westcoastbbqshop.com. I've already been getting a lot of people saying to me, hey, we're going to see you for EggFest. It's June 12th. You can save $5 right now on your EggFest tickets when you go to westcoastbbqshop.com and you use our promo code Kaplan5. You'll save $5 per ticket. So buy two, save 10. We'll see you out there on June 12th, westcoastbbqshop.com. All right, we're just getting rolling. Padres should be playing right now. Stick around. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios and lots to get to today. Hey, great friends. What's going down? Today is Tuesday. It is May 3rd. This is Kaplan and crew, and we come to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. I mentioned that on June 2nd, we're having our first ever supper club at Seven Mile Casino. So mark your calendars now. More information as the week goes on. Today, we're designing the menu. Yesterday, we were you know, making all the dates and the number of guests and so on. And today, we're designing the menu. And by the end of the week, we'll probably have quite a bit of information. But this is a big week around here, fellas. You got Friday, our first ever lunch bunch at Tavern at the Belly Up in Solana Beach. Completely sold out. 20 people all hanging out, having lunch. And then on Saturday morning, between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m., we're going to be at the Ride One Up e-bike demo day because i've had a lot of people guys even browner the other night when we were at your comedy show people were coming up to me after the show and they're like yo i'm really interested in one of those ride one up e-bikes thing is i don't want to buy it before i test ride it and i'm like i completely understand so this saturday what, what you don't well, believe us they <laughs> they probably believe us and they're probably really <laughs> interested in wanting an e-bike but who wants to buy an e-bike for 1500 bucks or 1700 bucks have it shipped to you Put it all together and then go, eh, I don't know if I love it. That's what's so great about their store actually opening up in Balboa Park, in my opinion. The fact that you can feel it, feel the quality, look at the quality. It's not a ridiculously 100-pound thing that you can't carry anywhere. Right. I don't know if I've ever told you that my neighbor here, this thin, small, petite woman who has a uh, just gigantic e-bike who every time I hear her stumbling across <laughs> up these stairs that I have, and then she's like, you need my help? She's like, please. And I'm like, Girl, you need to. I'm going to hook you up, man, because it's. I think that's so, so awesome about the store. It's just putting your hands on one. It's going to be good for everybody. This Saturday, and Alex, maybe put it up on the screen. We'll just we'll just give everybody a heads up right now. This Saturday, rideoneup.co slash great friends. That's the landing page to buy these bikes. Um, but this Saturday, between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m., I know it's only Tuesday, but mark your calendar now. At 415 Laurel Street in downtown San Diego, right in Balboa Park, we're doing a test ride demo day. So for anybody that's thought about an e-bike but hasn't ridden one and hasn't, you don't want to make that commitment until you actually get on one and ride one, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. this Saturday, me, Browner, Grande, Daniel Urbino, the CEO, there's a three-hour window where you can come in and test ride any of these bikes. And right now, they've got this sale going on. Browner, you love that limited that you're riding, correct? 1,000%. Well, now they're selling them in pairs. So you buy two limiteds, which by the way, they're already marked down 200% in their spring sale. They'll take off another $150 when you buy two. And trust me when I tell you, if you and your girlfriend or you and your wife or you and your pal are going to e-bike together, you're going to want to buy two. So again, this is a great opportunity for you and your buddy to go, hey, let's. I want one, you want one, let's go buy them together. We'll save even more money. But we're doing a demo day this Saturday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's at 415 Laurel Street. More information as the week goes on, but mark your calendar now. It's a demo day with Ride One Up e-bikes. I wonder would they be interested mm -hmm. in a business idea of you give us your old e-bike and then we'll sell you one of our e-bikes at a discounted price. Similar to like a used car lot, like a trade-in. Like what's the trade-in value of this 2,000 pound <laughs> e-bike that you have <laughs> for our e-bike, which isn't that. That doesn't sound like they're business yeah. model I know it's a solid idea though brown I, I like where your head's at you know you're always coming up with good ideas yeah i'm trying to figure out what time i can get there and it's the busiest so i can get on one and not come back mm. 
I'm pretty sure. Whoa, like a, a great friend away. must have took it. It wasn't us, man. A great friend must have took it. it you mean like where Tommy Daniel's Tommy. distracted and then right. you just zoom off with your brand new limited? Yes. Yeah. I'm, or a different one. I don't need a limited. I mean, any one of the, their model. I rode like their their cheapest model, mm -hmm. and that's just I was I got up super fast on that one too. So, um, I don't not I'm not exclusive to the limited. I knew a guy. I, I saw him a few weeks ago. I know a guy. He's a big guy. He's like six five, like two nineties, like a big giant dude, right? And I ran into him, and I'm like, uh, "Is that your e-bike?" And he's like, "Yeah." And I don't remember what brand it is, but it's a really well known brand, and it's super expensive. And Huffy. I said, "No, not Huffy, not Schwinn." Okay, oh. I'm trying to beat you to the punch here. Mongoose. No, not a mongoose. Okay, none of those. It's like a Pedego or something like that, if that's even really the name of a fancy bike. Anyway. This guy is 6'5", 280. And I said to him, I go, that's a pretty nice bike. Uh, no, I just lost 10 pounds. I, I said, I go, oh, 290. I go, hey, uh, I go, how, how fast does that bike go? And he goes, oh, man, I get this thing up to 22 miles an hour. I go, 22? 22? I'll go zooming right by you. I bet you. you he's working hard, Oh, yeah, because he's a big dude. I'm like, dude, I'll go zooming right by you on a ride one up e-bike. Dude, 28 miles an hour. You might as well be walking. To 30, I got up to 30 in jeans on the cruiser. Yeah. Like going through the literally from their shop to the Prado and back in jeans, 30 miles per hour. No problem. I think I'm going to get down there on Saturday because the demo day starts at 10. I'm going to try and be there at 10. Actually, I'm going to try, try, try to wake Rachel up early and go, Hey, let's go down to Balboa park. Let's go for a walk around the park. We'll do five, six miles around the park and then we'll get on an e-bike. So ride, ride my actual bike there and then feel the difference. Mm -hmm. Which I already know the difference because I ride my bike through Bubble Park all the time. Mm -hmm. And the hills just to get there are mm. stupid. Yeah. So I I already know the difference, but I really maybe I should just ride my bike over there. All right. Bring your old bike that you have to actually pedal and then get on an e-bike yeah. that you have the pedal assist. Have to exercise and then cruise. Well, that's the thing about the ride one up e-bikes. You can use them for exercise if you want. You can use them for just cruising. You can use them for transportation. They're just a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we'll see you guys on Saturday at our demo day with ride one up. All right. Let me, let me um, jump into a few things here as we broadcast from the seven mile casino studios here on a Tuesday afternoon. So the Padres are in Cleveland to take on the guardians and the storyline going in today, although, you know, the weather report was not necessarily looking very good uh, especially earlier in the day we're looking at like 90 percent chance of rain at game time thunderstorm yeah thunderstorm so who knows if this game is actually going to happen especially when we're when we're on the air right now east coast baseball in april and may is rough man yeah. it's a dice roll rough. yeah yeah a dice roll mm -hmm. roll the dice no a dice roll i know what yeah. he said and you just roll them right let them go yeah um mike clevenger the expected starter today for the Padres, his first start in 587 days. Welcome back. Just saying that out loud sounds it crazy. It does, doesn't it? Like 578 days, 587 days, rather, 587 days. So how many days are in a year? 300, 365. How much? 365. 365. What'd you say, Browner? 365. Oh, all right. I thought you said 375. You said 365. Yeah. Oh. 365 days in a year times two is like 700 some odd days, right? Mm -hmm. So it's been almost two years. Where were you 587 days ago? I'm like, I don't know. I was watching Mike Clevenger get pulled from the playoff game. <laughs> yeah. Five, that's 2020, <laughs> right? It's It's got to be September or October. I guess October. I'll tell you the exact date. Yeah. I'll just go to his game log in yeah. a second. But it's October of 2020, I'm guessing. October of 2020. Think about what has happened on planet Earth since Earth. October of 2020. That's how long it's been since Mike Clevenger has started a Major League Baseball game. We beat COVID. Mm -hmm. Then they came back. Uh, private citizens have gone to space. Mm -hmm. There's a war going uh, on we, right now. We, uh, we switched presidentes. See? Um, and we went on radio and television mm -hmm. and, and Roe v. Wade got abolished, which by the way, my not, daughter, who's eight, yet. my daughter, who's 18 years old is like, what's going on in America? A <laughs> bunch of rich, white, old men telling women what they can do to their bodies. And I'm like, why does it got to be like rich, old white guys? She's like, cause that's who it is. Dad. <laughs> I'm like, 
Okay. Um, to get back on track. Yeah, but I just got to say though that you right. talk about unacceptable. I mean, listen, a woman has her own body. She got the right to make her own decisions, and to have the government interfere after all these years, they're going to overturn. I mean, this has been a lifelong argument. I've been hearing this argument about their about reversing Roe v. Wade my entire life. Are we years. serious? Are we for real here? Right? Like I got three daughters. Hypothetically, my 18 year old daughter goes out and gets, you know, whatever and gets impregnated. I don't want my 18 year old daughter having a baby right now. And if she don't want to have it, and I don't want her to have it. She shouldn't have the right to, to be able to do what she wants to with her own body. I mean, it's it just really like some of the things that happen only when it comes to vaccines, do they want that's that? it. That's it. And masks. That's it. And they want freedom and things that they think freedom is better for them for. I mean, so. listen, if you told me this was just in Texas or this was just in Florida or Georgia or Alabama, the Bible Belt, Louisiana, I'd be like, yeah, you know, I get it. They're kind of wacky down there and I don't live down there, so I don't really care. But the fact that we're talking about this nationwide is just stupid. Anyway. All right. I'm, 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 I'm very uh, Mike Clevenger. Last, Mike Clevenger last pitched October 6th, 2020 against the Los Angeles Dodgers. He went one inning and was pooled. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, his game, he was already kind of getting hurt because he got pulled from an Angels game. But before that, I think we were all getting excited because it was, I do remember this, September 13th, part of a doubleheader. He pitched against the Giants, pitched all seven innings, only got two hits, no one runs, struck out seven. And we we're like, yo, Mike Clevenger, here we go. Mm -hmm. Short season, we're on the playoffs. And then yet. Yeah, Kind of went all downhill after that. Right. And then I don't even remember who started those playoff games. I think it was like Stammen. Random people pen. they were finding in yeah. the back. Hey, you, you, and that's you come on. 587 days since Clevenger's pitched in a major league baseball game. 587 days. A Tommy John surgery later, his second of his career, by the way. And while he is a celebrated character by Padre fans who, like you said, Alex, were kind of thinking back in September of 2020, like he's going to be a go-to guy. Um, we don't know. We, we really don't know yet. And we are not going to know, by the way. It, 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 assuming Clevenger pitches and he's healthy and he gets out of it okay, it, it's we're looking at two months before we know if Mike Clevenger is Mike Clevenger pre-second Tommy John. I think the idea that he won't be good because it's the second Tommy John when the the normal behavior of post Tommy John is you throw harder, you, you you gain a couple miles on your fastball. I'm expecting him to come and be the Mike Clevenger before he was before he got hurt because if one's good, two's got to be great. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think the way I look at it is it's not necessarily one or two months. It's what does he look like in October and November for me? It's it's did it hold up the whole season? See, but I, don't, I think I that's don't... the biggest question. Will it hold up? I don't think it's a velocity thing. I don't think it's a movement thing. I don't think it's obviously control comes with the more you pitch. But I for me, it's longevity and duration of the arm. See, but I think Will they're going to put him up? on a pitch count and they're going to say, this is how many pitches you're going to do this year. And I think he's going to exceed that number before the playoffs come. And I don't think, I don't think, I don't think Clevenger will be available for the playoffs. Oh, I really, think so you're Clevenger, already calling for him to not make it. No, 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 not, not, not for the Padres to not make it. I'm saying physically he will reach his number of pitches or his number of innings, depending on how they want to do it before you get to the playoffs, unless they give him a huge chunk off, which then doesn't make any sense if he's built up a rhythm. No, so dude, I, you, I, you need him for the latter part of the season. I mean, if the Padres believe that they're a real competitor against the Giants and the Dodgers, who start a series today in L.A., mm -hmm. if they really think that they are going to compete, then ultimately Mike Clevenger has got to be part of that plan. Or at least put it this way, that is part of their plan. Their plan is, okay, great, Clevenger will get healthy. And, and he'll get better as the year goes on. He'll get stronger as the year goes on. And then ultimately, we'll have the real Mike Clevenger back come October. Now, if he's look, the only one. I don't know if you're Brown or if, if you're right or If he's the only wrong. one that's hurt or he's the only one that can't, can't participate in the postseason, we'll be all right. Well, Brown, I don't know if you're right or wrong about that pitch count and if, whether or not he will exceed it before the playoffs. But I'll tell you this. You don't give a guy a two-year contract knowing he's not going to play for one of them with the expectation of him not being available for the playoffs. By the way, what's his dollar figure? Because yesterday we had a really long and um, 
big discussion. I would call it an argument really about the value of Joe Musgrove. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, and I just want to, to kind of give some final thoughts on that because I did see a lot of what Alex posted on social media. And I know we were talking about it yesterday and everybody was involved in the YouTube chat. So shout out to all the YouTubers out there that get involved in the conversation while we're on the air. We appreciate you guys in a big way. What do you think Clevenger makes a year? Take a guess, Browner. Uh, probably 12, maybe. Okay. And by the way, if that's the case, you paid him 24 for one year. Because remember, everybody knew that he wasn't going to be here last year. And a two-year, 11.5 million. Two oh, years, 11.5? That's what it says on okay. track. So, that doesn't sound right, it, though. But, but it's maybe. really a one-year deal at 11.5. I mean, when he had this surgery and they put this contract in front of him, he's like, I don't know if I'm ever going to pitch again. I'll sign it. Yeah. And so it's really a one-year $11 million deal, which brings, which brings exactly. us back to Musgrove. So I know that yesterday we were having this conversation about should Joe Musgrove sign a contract with the Padres eight years, $88 million. You realize that if Musgrove signs that contract, he's actually making less than a guy like Clevenger for as healthy and as dependable as Musgrove is. He'd actually be making less than Clevenger. Why are you shaking your head? No, is that not a mathematical fact? Cause we've got to do this again. Clevenger's worth more than Musgrove. Come on, come on. Clevenger's worth more than Musgrove when he's had two Tommy John surgeries and you sign him on a two-year deal and you're only going to get him for one year, how is he worth more than Musgrove? Stuff. He's got stuff, man. He's got better stuff. Again, Joe Musgrove, because I, I think people are going to take this the wrong way about what I think of Joe Musgrove. I think Joe Musgrove is a good pitcher. I'm not saying he is subpar. What I'm saying is when you're talking about guys on the mound who you know strike fear in the opponent, Joe Musgrove is not that guy. Like you can out you can out battle Joe Musgrove at the plate. There's guys like Mike Clevenger who you go listen. I, he has pitches I can't hit. Come on, come on, really? Okay. Okay. Wait, so 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 let me ask you a question. Um, does Mackenzie Gore have pitches you can't hit? Yes. Okay. Does and and does Joe Musgrove have pitches you can't hit? In my opinion, no. I so think he's every a good pitch pitcher. that he pitches you can hit. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I don't see him as a dominant pitcher, no. He's got a no-hitter to his credit. How many guys in Major League Baseball currently pitching have no-hitters to their credit? Lots. How many, you think? Kick, take a guess. I don't I'm know the answer. I'm going to look it up. How many you think? How many pitchers currently, active pitchers, have, have no-hitters on their resumes? Just take a guess. Two, five, 20, 50? I bet you it's a pretty small number. Only four more pitchers in baseball have more strikeouts than... Joe must go for Can now. you, Alex, show us a comp because we obviously all disagree on this, and it's fine. It's an interesting conversation. Browner's conver Browner's point is is that Musgrove doesn't have special stuff. I don't really know which of the three of us is a pitching analyst, but I just disagree with that, and I'm not a pitching analyst. But you've come up with some comps as to numbers and strikeouts and ERAs and win percentage. Who's a good comp for Joe Mus Joe Musgrove? This is the guy that keeps getting brought up because he has similar numbers and he just got paid this offseason and they're in similar ages. Jose Barrios, who in their career, an ERA of 393 for Joe Musgrove, an ERA of 404. Okay. Win percentage Barrios is better. The last three years, the Ks or strikeouts to walks. Four strikeouts to one walk for Musgrove, 3.65 strikeouts for Barrios. And war for this is very numbery for mm -hmm. you guys, probably. What I'm saying is they're very comparable pitchers. And Barrio signed a seven year, $131 million contract. Okay, seven year, $131 million. That's like what, $19 million a year? I'm just doing the math quickly here. Um, maybe not. 18.7. Okay, so so think about that, Browner. Take take a look on your screen, Browner, and and look at this comp here. The guy, Barrios has a seven-year, $131 million deal. He's making $19 million a year. Why would Joe Musgrove, with comparable numbers, rather than take $19 million, why would he take $11 million rather than $17 million? Why, so I gotta why, why is Musgrove worth so much less than Barrios? Put the numbers up, Alex, so we can all take a look at them if you don't mind. Go ahead. I got, I got up to 29 active players that have thrown no hitters. 29. Uh, so let me see. So why would Joe Burrow? I'm um, Joe Burrow. Why would Joe Musgrove take less than this guy? Right. right. So so Barrios has signif not significantly, just slightly better numbers. Mm -hmm. And the contract that he has is a seven year, one hundred and thirty one million. It's seven years at nineteen million a year. 
Well, Joe has better numbers except win percentage, but right. doesn't control. So, them. so these numbers are they're pretty comparable. Okay, so why would Joe Musgrove take less than Jose Barrios? Especially, by the way, not Barrios is making nineteen. Why would Musgrove take eleven? Why would why would he say, wait, I'm only sixty percent? Look at my numbers compared to his numbers. What? And when you say he doesn't have special stuff, here's Barrios and here's Musgrove in a complete side by side analysis. Musgrove has the better numbers. And the other guy, Barrios, is going to make $8 million more a year. Why? Why would he accept that, Joe, Joe Musgrove? Well, is Barrios playing in his hometown? Has, is, has Barrios been a high-level prospect his entire career? Has Barrios uh, 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 been some superstar person that commands that amount of money out of the gate? I don't, I don't know his pitching criteria to answer that question. But if Joe Musgrove wants – Barrios money then he's probably going to have to get that from another team I just it well let's simplify it let's simplify this conversation we never got to it yesterday what is Musgrove's number for you per year for me I I would, would without a doubt I give him 14 million a year without a doubt for 13 to 15 million a year easy I could do that it's not a big deal to me I wouldn't give him an eight-year contract I just don't believe in giving guys eight-year deals so I'd give him six years 15 million Six years, fifteen million a year. So I don't, I don't think that's an insult. I think that gives him an opportunity to to present himself as the number one guy to close his career out in his hometown. I front load the deal that most of the money's on the front end, but signing bonus things of that nature, and, and just kind of reward him for what he's going to be doing for me while I know he's going to be at his best. And on the back end, when it doesn't hurt me. I can go out and 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 use that money to get other pitchers because I right, think he's a bridge pitcher between the guys you have now and the guys that you believe are coming up. All right, we got a lot more to get to on this subject. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studio. Stick around, everybody. This is Kaplan and Crew. Hey, great friends, what's happening? It's Kaplan and Crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studio, SevenMileCasino dot com, along with Grande and the Brown Man. You know, we've been arguing for two days now about this whole just Joe Musgrove situation. And I'll just say this. This is my final thought on it. If Joe Musgrove can't get himself a comparable deal from his hometown team where he's pitched the only no-hitter in franchise history, where he had the first mural on his high school and one that, you know, it's turned into a whole big thing now with Padre murals all over town. If I'm Joe Musgrove and I can't get myself a comparable deal that's I'll just call it again, seven years, $130 million. If I can't get myself an $18, $19 million a deal, a million dollar a year deal, if I can't get that from the Padres, guess what? As a Joe Musgrove supporter and fan, I got no issue at all if he takes off to the Dodgers, the Giants, the Yankees, the Cubs, the Red Sox, or anybody else who's willing to pay that guy that kind of money. I got no issue with it at all. Um, at, eight, in fact, at 18 million, he will be wearing another uniform because he is entirely replaceable. Well, I was told that's where I was about to. Uh, <laughs> I'm so glad you said he's entirely replaceable because, in my opinion, I think the thing that we have not discussed and where he gets a lot of his value is that he has taken control of that pitcher's room. He is the leader of that rotation. He may not be the best in mm -hmm. quotes as far as talent goes, but I think that his leadership in that clubhouse is is top notch. It's up there with the leaders of the whole team, if not the leader of the team. I mean, I just don't see why why you're so like um, why you're you're, and I'm not saying you're downing on the guy, right? It's just that you Darvish has an injury history. Mm -hmm. uh, Blake Snell hasn't even pitched so far this year. Mm -hmm. We have no idea what Mike Clevenger is going to be after nearly 600 days of not pitching. Mackenzie Gore is still a young kid who we're all excited about, but mm -hmm. we don't know for sure. Three starts, okay. Um, and I just don't understand, like to me, the most constant, consistent, guaranteed guy who's going to show up, be healthy and give you everything he's got is Joe Musgrove. And when you're again, we've shown you the comps here to a guy like Jose Barrios, who he has better numbers, does Musgrove than Barrios and Barrios got a, a much more lucrative contract that he's already signed versus the one that the Padres have offered. The Padres are hoping exactly what you've said, Browner. He's a hometown kid. He wants to finish his career here. $88 million is a lot of money, but I got news for you. Hey, Joe, you sign an $88 million deal for eight years. You just left on the table legitimately 
50 million dollars why would he do that and i'm not saying he should i'm saying if if that money is somewhere else go get it go get guess it what, guess what that money's here that money's in san diego not not if, if not if i'm in the padres front office because that what he does can be duplicated there are guys around the league who can do what he does they got anybody like, on the, it, they got anybody on the padres right now that can do what he does him Okay. He's the guy on this roster right now that can do what he does. Okay. Every mm -hmm. roster probably every roster has a consistent innings eater guy who can go out and show up every fifth day and take the ball. Now, you would like for that to be your number one guy, but in this particular situation, it's not due to injury. And so since he is the guy who can be that person, like that has value. That has worth because to get to the playoffs, you need a guy like that. You need two or three guys like that, to be perfectly honest. But when you get to the playoffs, the innings eater isn't the guy who's going to win you the series. You need the Darvishes. You need the Snails. You need the healthy Clevengers to get to win the series. And yet all three of those guys you can't count on. I'm Listen, I'm telling you, when we get to the playoffs, win, not if, win, and Joe Musgrove is the game one starter. That ain't scaring nobody. Let me ask you something. Is you Darvish scaring anybody? Yeah. A healthy you listen, if a healthy you Darvish takes the mound game one, guys know that they he could be lights out. Mm -hmm. They yes. don't know that they don't know that about Musgrove. No. Because they can hit everything he pitches. All his pitches are hittable. All of them. He ain't got no Dude, he ain't got no no specialty. He's got the pitches. fifth most strikeouts in baseball right now. I know you're you're making these statements like they're like, just, they just they're, they're just, just wrong. They're just out there <laughs> statement. They're they're not like based in fact. They're not. They're just they're just. Statements. He's got the fifth most strikeouts in baseball, dude. Okay, let Maybe me ask you a have... question. Okay, okay, let me ask y'all a question. Mm. So if if it's based on what y'all saying, if I'm just I'm making this stuff up. Okay, where was when the Padres got him? Why weren't the Dodgers after him then? Why weren't the, the Yankees after him? Why weren't the Giants after him with big money contracts or big trades? Why weren't this this clamoring for Joe Musgrove? How did we get him when we lose out to when we lose out to everybody else for big trades? When we get how'd they the get Clevenger? How'd they get Darvish? How'd they get Snell? They traded for him. When we when we get the rug pulled out of us, all these three guys, these elite guys that you're talking about, how come the how come they're on the Padres? Well, you traded for Drew Darvish. You traded you for Clevenger. Traded for you traded for Blake, Blake Snell. Snell. You traded for Joe Musgrove. So, but, but that's what I'm saying. When we traded for Joe Musgrove, was there fanfare where people were like, oh, we got Joe Musgrove? Yes. There was no yes. table slapping when we got Joe Musgrove. When we got Blake Snell, people were like, yeah, we got Blake Snell. When we and got Mike Clevenger, people were like, yeah, we got Sunshine. When we got you Darvish, folks was like, yeah, we got you Darvish. When we got Joe Musgrove, like, oh, that's cool. Oh, he's there. Let me ask you a question, too. When they traded for Tatis, was there a giant clamoring and slamming? Was there a parade being thrown downtown? No, they're like, oh, they got a prospect. Cool. They got rid of James. No, actually, what was said was, we thank God we got rid of James Shields' contract. That's what they said. He was a prospect. people. People turn into things. Joe, Joe Musgrove, Musgrove was already was, playing. What are right. You talking? Joe those, Musgrove those in the last things. Joe Musgrove the last three seasons has been one of the best pitchers, one of the most solid pitchers in baseball. You're He's turning into things. You're comparing. You're living off reputation. And I'm living in the present. How do you You're get a reputation? Off, Mike Clevenger's off reputation. There is no performance. He hasn't pitched in 587 days. So how Blake, come you? So how come you, Darius, make this money? How come Mike Clevenger got the, got the, the, this 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 aura around him? Because he's done things that Joe Musgrove hasn't done. What aura? What aura, what aura does, does he have around him? him? Aura. Bro, I can't. I can't wait till these dudes to actually get out on the mound throwing 97, 95 miles an hour, striking dudes out. And no Joe Musgrove got ground like, ball out. See, here's what you do, and you do it with every conversation. It's so freaking annoying. You do it to every conversation. <laughs> you pit you 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 like make these comparisons that you start comparing like. With your own with your own guys now you're doing. Normally you do it against other guys. Now you're doing it against your, your own guys. Musgrove ain't anything compared to Mike Clevenger. Musgrove I didn't say ain't, that. Yes, that's all you've said. It's not even close. He's his stuff is his stuff is hittable. He's not special. And he can be replaced by anybody. He's See, an innings eater. You're, that's you're, literally you're what doing, you said. You're doing exactly what I did not say because you're trying to pivot the conversation. Because all you have is that what he has after five starts, four starts, whatever he has. What I'm saying is I've never, said, I've never said Joe Musgrove's not good. 
That's not. I've never said that. No, you I said specifically he's, made you it said very he could clear. Easily be replaced. That's what you said. Quote. I. I. This is what I said. I specifically said he is replaceable. Right. Easily. I said there's nothing. I said there's nothing special. I said his talent is his consistency. You said every one of his pitches is hittable. Because they you, are. You said you know? he can be replaced by anybody. He's just an innings eater. He's mm -hmm. got nothing special about him. Those are things that you've said. His pitching. Listen, just listen to me for one second, okay? All I'm saying to you is this, that Joe Musgrove is the Padres' best pitcher. That That's all. He's their best pitcher. You say and every I disagree pitcher. with that. Okay. I'm, I'm, it's fine. By the way, I don't think Joe Musgrove is worth $20 million either. I've never even – I haven't had the chance to say that because you just start attacking this dude and as far as like his – but what's in front of you? I don't know. That's what makes me so. How am I so attacking him? That's How am I attacking him? I said he's a good pitcher. How? Where is the attack? Actually, you, you kind of said he's everything of everything about him. Right. <laughs> You've diminished every part of his game. What are you? That's talking not about? an attack. That's my evaluation <laughs> on his skill set. That's not right. an attack. Okay. So you've criticized and diminished everything he is as a pitcher, when he's clearly their best pitcher. Again, it makes no sense. I don't understand like how the reasoning even makes sense in your brain. Like, I don't get it. You're talking about a guy who hasn't pitched in 587 days. You're talking about, about a guy in you, Darvish, who had above a four ERA in the last eight months of the year. You're talking about Blake Snell, who can't pitch longer than five innings. And if he does, he gets hurt after three starts. And so I don't know. You're diminishing. So now you're diminishing the Padres pitching. No, staff. Yeah, I am from the platform you're putting them on. Yes, I'm bringing them down no, to I, reality. I'm not, I'm not doing that to Joe Musgrove. I'm giving you an evaluation on mm -hmm. what I think of his skill set. That's right. what I think. And if I'm you just, think Joe I Musgrove just, is their best pitcher, then he's going to have time to prove it. I, I don't think that's the case. But you're well, also going back into the archives and you're saying things like, well, why was there not this clamoring for Joe Musgrove? Well, let's let's just slow down for a second here. In terms of clamoring for him, he was coming from Pittsburgh, where they're a terrible team and a terrible organization. So who was he back then when he was pitching for the Pirates versus who has he developed into now that he's pitching for the Padres? They're different I mean, players. M M Mr. Records over here told us he won the World Series yesterday. Said he was on he a was World, on Series World Series team. team. And by yeah. the way, neither you nor I knew that. And right. That's my whole point. That's my whole point. You know who Justin Verlander is, don't you? Yeah, but right. all I'm saying is, is and Justin you keep proving my point. This. <laughs> all you, you're living off reputation. I'm just telling you what it is right now. That's all I'm trying to tell you, Browner. You can, I, dude, you can have your opinion on Musgrove, and that's great. But what I'm disagreeing with you is that you're living off reputation. I'm telling you what is the facts today, as we sit here today. And, and by the you way, you asked the question. To bring up reputation, reputation, reputation. When in reality, reputation is not reality right now. Yeah, you you keep asking the question like, well, why was you Darvish paid the way he was paid? Because that's what the Cubs paid him. Yeah, and, the the, and, then the, and then the Padres said, you know what, we'll we'll trade for him because we need a veteran experienced pitcher who's been in some high leverage situations. And this they is what he gets a, paid. And by the way, you veteran actually experienced hated the U number trade. one. You, you they, hated let the me repeat trade. that. <laughs> let me repeat that. They needed yeah. a veteran experienced number one when they traded for Joe Musgrove. What were they trading for? They were trading for an experienced middle of the rotation kind of guy. But what's happened is, is he's elevated his game. And more than anything, he stayed the healthiest. And so that's made him the most consistent. And so for that, and by the way, here's just one last thought on this whole money issue. It's not my money. I don't care. I mean, when the Padres didn't have money to spend and they had to just kind of piece together a team, that was a different world. But when Manny Machado's making $30 million and Fernando mm -hmm. Tatis is making over $30 million, mm -hmm. and Hosmer – let me ask you a question. Who's more valuable to this team, Hosmer or a guy like Musgrove? You asking me? Yeah. This year? Just generally speaking, who, who no. would you – if you had to get rid of one or the other, who would you get rid of? This year? Right now. Oh, I'd get rid of Joe Musgrove. Eric Hosmer plays every day. He's leading, he's leading baseball and batting average. Mm -hmm. And that's going to remain all, all year long? There's no guarantee Joe Musgrove will remain all year long either. Nor is there a guarantee that Eric Hosmer is going to remain where he's at all year long. You've seen what Eric Hosmer is. I would say this. Joe Musgrove is trending upward, and Eric Hosmer has been, prior to the start of this season, been trending downward. But if we're going to go back and forth about Joe Musgrove's statistics this year, 
you have to do the same thing for Eric Hosmer. But we're not. That's not what we're doing. We're not talking about Joe Musgrove's stats this year. We're talking about Joe Musgrove, the Padre, over the last two years. We or were three years. We were comparing him to Berrios. Actually, if you go back and you look at those Berrios numbers, is that just this year, Alex? No, it's the last three. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I would, if you, I, I would rather have Eric Hosmer as opposed to Joe Musgrove because Eric Hosmer plays every day. Mm. Bottom line is this. Your analysis that he does nothing special, he doesn't scare anybody, every one of his pitches are hittable. I mean, that, that to me is just strong opinion. I don't necessarily think, geez, you know, Browner is just such a smart baseball guy and and studies this stuff so intently. And man, he, that's 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 right on. That's just a, It's just talking is what that is. If you would go around Major mm -hmm. League Baseball. Have you done this? Just so I know. Have, I have you done, done this? this? If you ask them on that rotation, who do you fear the most mm -hmm. batting against? Joe Musgrove's not going to be on that list, bro. Stop mm -hmm. it. No, Clevenger is? Stop it. Stop it. Clevenger is? Is that, is that the guy? Clevenger, Clevenger would be on there before Musgrove would. Come on. Guy's been pitching almost 600 days. Really? Now. Now wait till he pitch today. Mm. That's what you need to do. Wait till he pitch today. We'll see one thing I, one tomorrow. thing, Alex, one thing you say about Browner's argumentation skills is you hate certain parts of it. See, I actually love it because this dude will fight till the death. Right. And I will too. I just opinions. don't like, I just don't like the, that I have to always take a, a side just to, to prove a point. And it, cause it's like, I don't, I don't think that, Blake Snell's a terrible pitcher, but I now have to like act like I do because he he acts like Joe Musgrove is one. I didn't say, but again, I never said that. No, you you that's said what you see, right. You said everything all, without saying it. here. Nothing special. So don't do this to when, y'all when, when, when you do say, this. but when you say when you say he doesn't do anything special, how should I'm, how am I supposed to take that? What's okay? What's wrong with that? Nothing. But that? but but nothing. There's nothing wrong with it. But but okay. when let you me, say let me, let me it, ask you a go get paid. Go get paid elsewhere. Let me All ask, his yes. stuff is hittable. At at twenty million? Can, at twenty can, million? No, you just said no you ain't giving him twenty million. No, I, no number. I'm just talking about Joe Musgrove, the pitcher. I wasn't even allowed to bring up a number because you start yelling about everything. That's the thing. That's what. That's the way you argue is the way you do comedy. I'm gonna yell at you and I'm gonna I command yelling. this argument. I wasn't I'm gonna yelling to start this argument. conversation. I'm just telling you the way that you made this argument about Joe Musgrove. I'll keep it to this one. The way that you've made an argument to not pay Joe Musgrove twenty million, you have diminished all of his pitching abilities to like the lowest level. That's a fact of what you did. Did you say he's a terrible pitcher? No. Did you describe a terrible pitcher? Yes. How am you, I supposed to? You describe Joe Musgrove know. as you as you would describe Chris Paddock. When you say something, <laughs> tell me what you mean. Everything is hittable. He has yeah. no special stuff. Right. He's like, just an innings eater. He can be replaced by anybody. So how, how am I supposed to receive that? That he's really good? Who? <laughs> <laughs> he average. He Joe average. Mus Joe Musgrove is average. There you go. Leave it at that. Okay, that's it right there. So Joe pay Musgrove him, pay is him average. Like an average pitcher will go get paid elsewhere. Yep. We could have we could have bottled it up in yep. two minutes. If you Joe Musgrove if, is average. If you want to give Joe Musgrove twenty million dollars, be my guest, brother. Yeah. Well, whoever well, you are, well, whatever uniform, whatever organization you represent. Well, what if the Padres decide to do it? I think it would be a mistake because he's average. In terms of this rotation, yes. Oh I think he's proven God. to be – I think he is proving and continues to prove since he's been in San Diego that he's more than an average pitcher. And it's up to him to continue to do that this year. If he does it back-to-back -back years where he has a three ERA and he goes 32 starts, I think that that is more than an above-average pitcher who probably should make bar at least Barrios money. And probably touching nineteen twenty. I just want to know one thing: to do it. is Blake Snell average? No, but he doesn't. He's he's hurt. He doesn't even play right now. And when he does play, he can't go past five innings. Is is, Clev is Clevenger average? We don't. We'll see. I well, don't he hasn't think played. So. I don't believe in six hundred. He hasn't played in six hundred days, and he's had two Tommy John surgeries. And prior I to that, what did Clevenger ever do? What did Clevenger do in his career that made you believe that he is just so much better than Joe Musgrove? The makeup of what Mike Clevenger has, skill set, pitching, speed, what is that? arm strength, that's more impressive to me. What is what is the top end for Clevenger versus what is the top end for Musgrove? Just so I know. 
Before before Clevenger got hurt, it was like 97. Okay, and what is what is it for Musgrove? I don't know. What? Uh, it ain't 97. What? You don't know either. See, I you, don't. That's what I'm asking also you because you're, you're part the two. expert. You, you are you're... always trying to put me on the spot to try to, oh, defend this, defend that. You don't know either. Because, so what are you talking about? But I'm not the one making the statements, dude. So so you giving him $20 million? I would uh, say, uh, uh, I would say, uh, I would uh, say uh, that Joe Musgrove <laughs> is a more than $11 million a year pitcher. I said the two. And, and probably a little less than a $20 million a year pitcher. I but, said 13 to 15. So that's a crime. It's not a crime. It's just that, listen, when I ask you questions, it's because you make statements that I assume you must have You must have information. I don't have that information because I don't do that research. Then you better stop making statements, sir. But I don't make statements. That's a lie. What are you talking about? Come on. The, 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 the data has so, been presented. I'm looking at the numbers. So you give You're him 20 saying, million. Listen, hold on. Let me How ask much you, you giving him? Okay. How much you giving him? Let's talk to you. Let's talk to you. How much you giving him? Well, I mean, gosh, based on the scouting report that he's average and his every pitch is hittable and he doesn't that's do anything special. That's my scouting report. What's right, your well, that's, scouting that's, report? But that's, that's your scouting report. So based on that alone. Oh, yours. I'm, Off I'm of yours. Oh, no, I'm getting rid of him. Oh, I don't Off watch Joe Musgrove around. I, I go yours. with you. You're the, you're the scout. Okay, I go with well, you. then guess what? We're going to be in better shape because we're going to have money to spend. <laughs> I would give Joe Musgrove. I would take money from you, Darvish, and give it to Joe Musgrove. Just you, Darvish, has been a disappointment since he's been here. So I mean, he has a losing him? record of four or five ERA. It's not the number one guy that you were signing up for. How much you giving him? I said already. I would give him Barrios money. I would give him any from 18, 19 million a year. Okay. That's too much for me. That's out of my range. Right. I know. You said 14 million. I get it. 13 just, to 15. Yeah. Guy's yeah. average. Guy's I, average at best anyway. <laughs> Maybe. Seriously. I mean, I did my work. I did my work. I did my work. Did you? I I no, I didn't. I didn't. Well, I didn't do any of the work. You I better didn't use my work. recommendation so we can I'm have money. Because I'll tell you tomorrow. Yeah. Everyone's everyone is healthy. Everyone is healthy, Browner. And you're okay. you're playing against the Dodgers in the National League Championship in the NLCS. Okay. Give me they really only do three starters in the playoffs, right? Give me your three starters. Everybody's, Everybody's healthy. healthy. Mm -hmm. Darvish, what? Darvish. You you asked me a question. Oh, I'm just I'm, I want to make sure you're going in order. I just want to make sure you're yeah. going in order. Opening game against yeah. the Dodgers NLCS. Darvish. Yes. You, Darvish. Blake Snell. Mackenzie Gore. Oh, good God. <laughs> <laughs> you asked me. <laughs> All right. Listen, we're in the Seven Mile Casino stuff, Studios. Baby. You got seven, stuff. seven Mile Casino.com. <laughs> oh, There's so Browner. many stats about baseball, too. Browner. Like Browner can come in here and he's got. Spin rate. Brown hey, Musgrove's WRC plus is like minus seven, and his ERA plus is one of ten. Like if he really just starts saying letters right. and words, he could sound yeah. really smart. I know. He could. I'm not going to correct them. There's so right. many stats. All right, stick Eyeball. around. We got to. The Dodgers are starting a series with the Giants. The Angels are starting a series with the Red Sox, and we got a lot of other stuff we really want to get to. A lot of football stuff. Stick around. This is Kaplan and Crew. All right, great friends. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man on a Tuesday afternoon. Glad everybody's here listening on 1090. For everybody that watches on television at night, glad you guys watch on Channel 4 San Diego and part of the Cox Your View Network, Channel 4 at Santa Barbara. And if you're on Spectrum or Cox Cable and you're in Orange County or L.A., it's Channel 118. For everybody that's on our YouTube page right now and part of our YouTube chat, glad you guys are here. And for everybody that catches up to us on all the different audio podcast platforms, thank you very much. We really do appreciate it, everybody. Hey, guys, before we get on with it, um, I'm curious. Sunday is Mother's Day. Now, Grande, I know you were home up in Oxnard last weekend and saw Mama Padilla. Mm -hmm. Any uh, Anything going on for Mother's Day or any good creative gift-giving ideas for all the fellas out there? Any thoughts on that? Um. Well, my mom doesn't do Mother's Day. She's been adamant about that my entire life. She's mm -hmm. like, I'm your mother 365 days a year. Tell me happy Mother's Day every day kind of mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I don't do gifts on Mother's Day because mm -hmm. she wouldn't accept them. Mm -hmm. But I, I might be the wrong person to ask that question. All right, Brown. Any Any Mother's Day thoughts? Could be your mom. Could be baby Jay's mom. Could be just a friend who's a mom. Any good Mother's Day advice for the guys out there?
is everybody's favorite Browner, right? Same, same. My favorite too. Yeah, there's a yellow card. <laughs> there's a you, yellow card for if you. you. Treat all. <laughs> Look at he just jumps right back in. He doesn't even acknowledge the yellow card in your life <laughs> the same way every day, which being mm. special. Then you should not have to go above and beyond for quote unquote Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. So don't mm -hmm. be a loser and leave it up for one day for you to make up for the other 364. You've been subpar as a son. But if player. you are like, you know, an Easter Catholic, I kind of like, like to say, where well, you go to church on Easter and that's really it. Mm -hmm. If you only do the nice things for your mom on Mother's Day, mm -hmm. do you have an idea of what to do, Scott? Well, like, for example, my son is returning home from college on Friday night. Mother's Day is on Sunday. And I know that my ex-wife on Mother's Day, she just wants to be with her kids. So my ex-wife is taking my three of my four. My fourth is still at school, away at college. She's taking the three kids to a Padre game. And it's almost it's like her own day. It's not, is that not like the kids. Is Mother's are, Day this Sunday? Yeah, I think yes. so. Yeah. Oh. So it's not like it's not like the kids are like, hey, mom, we got this great idea. Let's go to the Padres game for Mother's Day. It's her saying, hey, kids, I want to be with you on Mother's Day, and I want to do something fun, so we're going to go to the Padres game. What kind of now, seats they got? I don't know yet. I, I don't know what kind of seats they got. Now, my, my girlfriend, who is – this is where life gets complicated, fellas. Browner, can you feel me on this? No, oh, I got a lot of mothers I got to deal with. <laughs> That's all I'll say about that. Say what? Yeah, yeah, he said it. You heard him. We laugh. Everybody else is like, tell me more, Browner. I want to know more. That's all I've given you. That's all I got. Just know. Mm -hmm. So when life gets a little complicated, like it is right now, where you've got an ex-wife who wants to take your three kids to the Padres game, and I got a girlfriend who's got two boys, and she wants to do something fun with her sons on Mother's Day. She wants I to go like to the Padres you, game, too. free for the day. Well, <laughs> Alex just nailed it. Alex just crushed it. He's like, so, so here's me, right? I'm caught in the middle. My, I know because my kids have told me that my ex-wife is planning to take them to the Padres game. My girlfriend said, you know, it sounds like a nice idea for Mother's Day. I said, tell me. She said, what if we take my sons to the Padres game? And I went, oh, no, that's not a good idea. That's a terrible idea. That's a horrible That sounds like a gift. A thousand that like things, a there's a thousand things to do in San Diego on Mother's Day. And that is the thing that mothers want to do? Go to a baseball game? Who's pitching on I, Sunday? Joe Musgrove? I uh, hope so. They'll be bored to death. <laughs> <laughs> Think about how much offense we'll see because every pitch is hittable. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's what I'm he saying. He just pitches batting practice. This is ground balls left and right. May 7th against the Marlins. Ooh, it's the Sunday night game on ESPN. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know this. I thought it was a Sunday day game. Oh, nobody's going to go to the game. May 7th? May 7th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Or is that yeah. Saturday? No. Oh yeah. Saturday's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Saturday's Never mind. the seventh. Never mind. May so Sunday's the eighth. May is a regular one p.m. game. Okay. So here's the dilemma I find myself in. You guys tell me what to do here. You ready? So my kids tell me that their mom is taking them to the Padres game on Sunday for Mother's Day. Seems like a nice thing to do. Mm -hmm. Now, girlfriend <laughs> says, "I've got two sons. I want to be with them on Mother's Day. I want to do something fun, something that they would like to do. What if we, me and her, take her sons to the Padres game?" What's the problem? All right. All right. Hold on. Is that a problem? Are you invited? Yes. To okay. both? No. Great question. No. I'm invited to the girlfriend and two sons Padre game visit, but not invited to the ex-wife and my own three children Padre. So before we get deeper into this. I feel, I feel like I feel like we just answered this question. Hold on. But hold Go on. Ahead, before, 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 we get deep, before we get deeper into this, Browner, hold on. Yeah. Are you allowed to talk about this? Oh, good question. Oh, I don't know. Well, you should probably yeah. not. Yeah. I don't Talk about the girlfriend side. Yeah. Okay, so here's the girlfriend side. You ready? So the girlfriend says, why don't we take my sons to the Padres game? And I say, oh, that's a horrendous idea. Terrible. Mm -hmm. Horrible. And she says, why is it a bad idea? And I said, well, because you know that my ex-wife and my three kids are going to be down at the Padres game. Now, can you imagine how uncomfortable... It would be for who I'm for me, nobody yeah. else for me. Okay. Just for me. I'm walking down Petco park. There's me, my girlfriend. How do you walk down Petco park? Like this. Okay. Like this right here. Ooh, See ooh, the way I'm walking? Ooh, See the way I'm walking? Ooh, right you Toby Maguire in Spider-Man three. 
See this right here? This is my yeah. walk right here. Okay. I'm walking down the concourse of Petco Park. I know it doesn't feel good. I'm walking down the concourse of Petco Park. Here's my girlfriend over here. Here's her two sons over there. They're great kids. I would, I, I would gladly take these guys to a Padres game anytime, right? Now I'm walking down the concourse and now coming straight at me. There's my ex-wife and my three children. Well, I have a solution already in your yeah. scenario. Let me ask you a question. Your wait, scenario. Wait, 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 okay. Before we get to your solution, let me ask a question. Mm. Is this a secret relationship you have with your current girlfriend? No, not secret at all. Then why would the ex-wife care? Like, why would she care? Like, there's no, there's, it's not like a wild, it's not like a Western when y'all see each other. It's going to be like, wah, wah, wah. Actually, the ball's going to roll no. through. Well, no. Don't even answer that. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to, I'm not even touching yeah, it. Don't even answer that. Um, great question, Brunner, but don't answer that. Yeah, um, good question. Solid question. I would, I would answer it off air. I'm not going to answer right. it on air. So okay. in my scenario, in the mm -hmm. way Scott Kaplan operates, Mm -hmm. you don't there is no concourse where you sit mm -hmm. so there is no wild west shoot off because they're not even allowed where you'll be but i don't think okay. those would be the seats you'll be in on mother's well, that's that's, that's, that's okay. the way you avoid the, the this anything no no you're wrong alex you got this all wrong let me tell you where you're wrong because now hypothetically you ready my ex-wife goes and buys four tickets for her and my three kids and they go to the Padres game and they're sitting down the first baseline and they got nice seats. They're good seats. But then all of a sudden, every time they look up at the Friar vision, every time they look up at the jumbotron, there's me sitting behind home plate right. with me, my girlfriend and her two kids. Right. Now, how, how does that make my kids feel? You can't sit there this one time, dog. Yeah, that, right. Well, but, but, but beyond I don't want to, I don't want to answer truthfully to that question, Scott. Look, here's what I want to say. I'm going to be very, very, very selfish about my answer here. This is all about me. Okay. It's supposed to be Mother's Day. I'm making it all about me. And here's why. If my ex-wife wants to take my three kids to a Padres game, good for them. I think it'll be a lot of fun. And I hope my kids have a blast. And I hope my ex-wife has a wonderful Mother's Day with them. I really do. If I'm at the same ballpark at the same time at the same game, and I come walking down the concourse, and here comes my ex-wife and my three kids, and now... The two families bump into each other, but I'm with girlfriend and children, not with ex-wife and my own kids. The guilt that I personally would be experiencing of I'm here at the game with girlfriend and her children while my kids are at the game and I'm not with them. I'm telling you right now, that's the sort of guilt that I personally cannot endure. I cannot handle that. Okay. I can't uh, listen, man. I can't. Uh, contribute to the conversation anymore because I almost just said something out loud that it's not. So no, I'm going to, I'm going to go full browner and I'm just going to lean back. You're going to lean back, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I cannot listen. I'm telling you right now, it's not a matter of ex girl, ex wife and girlfriend running into each other. That's not the issue. The issue is the guilt that I would be feeling that I would be at the same place at the same time with my kids. And rather than me being with my kids, I'm with my girlfriend and her kids. That's my, but that's it's my mother's goal. day. It's not Scott's father's day. You know what I, know, I mean? I so it's not I, really yeah, up to you. Sorry. No, dude, I can't deal with it. I can't deal with it. I, I cannot. And I will not. Then don't. I'm not. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm I think sometimes, it. you know, problems get built up in people's heads when there's no. an easy solution, which is don't put yourself in that situation. I'm not doing it. I'm not going. Okay. Let's move on. I'm, I am not going. Now, if now if they tell me they're not going, then I'll go. I couldn't imagine, man. I cannot imagine walking through. Listen, I've been divorced and I've been I've been I mean 43,000 people there, dude. The chances of that happening are just dude, very one hundred percent would happen. Guaranteed. See, because you're it's in your head that it's gonna happen. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking about ideas here for Mother's Day, fellas. And uh, here's just an idea I'm going to throw your way. This is from our partners over at iThrive, iThriveMD, iThriveMD.com. So I was talking to Ra, Kel, Gay. This is DJ Gay's wife. And she sent me an email and she said, let all of your listeners know that we've got a Mother's Day deal for them just this week. Okay. So guys, if you're thinking about your mom or your wife or your girlfriend, or whatever. Kaplan and crew listeners will receive 50% off their own IV. We've been doing these IV lounges. Brown, how good did you feel on Saturday night when you were hitting that stage after you'd all 
gotten all IV'd up at iThrive. My mind was clear. My vision was clear. So the jokes came out. <laughs> <laughs> so Kaplan and crew listeners, guys, you'll receive 50% off your IV therapy when you purchase Botox or filler for the mother or wife or girlfriend or whomever for the lady in your life. Now, here's what you do. You use the code Kaplan when you call and you book an appointment. 858-240-1497. 858-240-1497. You call iThriveMD. You say, hey, I'm looking for some Botox or filler for moms. And by the way, the prices are insanely inexpensive on Botox and filler. Um, in fact, Raquel sent me a whole list. She's like, normally it would cost this, but you're only paying this. So I, I wish I had the numbers in front of me. I don't. But suffice it to say, it's super inexpensive in comparison to regular retail value. And you, the guy, the gift buyer, you're getting 50% off your IV. So Botox, filler, and 50% off your IV when you use the promo code Kaplan, 858-240-1497, 850 1497 and I really would love to be able to tell you guys what those numbers are. I think I got it. Oh, you do? Are you talking about the 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 Botox? Yeah. Per unit? Mhm. Mm so it's uh normally 13, they're doing it for 9.99 and 100 dollars off fillers as well. Yeah. Yeah. So 9.99 for the Botox when it's normally 13 bucks and 100 dollars off the filler. So I don't really know a whole lot about Botox and filler. Um it's just good lighting in here. It's not Botox. I know a lot of you have asked if I've been getting a lot of Botox in my forehead. No, no, no. It's just, uh, it's just lighting. So, um, look, big discounts and you're saving 50% off your IV when you use the promo code Kaplan, 858-240-1497, 858-240-1497. I didn't have any great ideas for Mother's Day gifts, but this is a really good one. I got to think of something else to do. Anybody else have any good ideas as to what you could do on Mother's Day? Maybe I have any other really good I ideas. I got a really original idea, Scott. Mm -hmm. oh. Really original idea. Mm -hmm. Take her to brunch. No one does that. No, no one's going right? to be at brunch. No every place be will be brunch. available. Dude, I, I, dude I think that the lines at North Park for Sunday for every brunch spot we have on university, which is like eight. It's cataclysmic. Uh, it's going to look like a parade, I think, on university. It's nowhere to park people are going to be on the street. It's I terrible. Call, I, I, should, I should rent my parking spot. You should. Good idea. I should wake up Sunday, park anywhere because it's Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then just like put a sign like, hey, you want my parking spot? 50 bucks. 50 bucks, man. Saturday like a, night, like you got to park your car on the street. Like a USC game. No, Saturday, morning. Saturday nights in North Park. You didn't know parking anywhere. It's Sunday mornings when everybody gets towed that I could just come in. Oh, that's true, too. I got this guy who calls me from out of nowhere. I barely know this guy. The guy who wants you to give him a car? No, not that guy. Different guy. Oh. The guy who wants me to give him a car has stopped calling me and leaving me voicemails. Oh. So I think he's kind of got, he got a car. Idea. So I get this call from this guy this week and he, he calls me up. I'm telling you guys, I barely know this guy, you know? I mean, I know him and he's a friend of a friend and he's an acquaintance at best. But he's a year ago, quick. A, well, a year ago he called me and he said, Hey, um, I know you're friends with the people out at the Rancho Valencia resort. Is there any way you could possibly help me out and get me a table for mother's day? So oh. I, I was trying to be a nice guy, you know? And I was like, um, yeah, okay, sure. So I call this buddy of mine and he says, yeah, I'll, I'll get him in. So I haven't talked to this guy in a year. I literally have not talked to this guy in a year. This mother effer sends me a text this week and says this week and says, Hey, can you get me into the Rancho Valencia for mother's day? I'm like, really? He's like, and by the way, he wasn't exactly like, you know, Hey, I just appreciate the effort. It was like, I've got three people and I need it at 10 30 in the morning. I'm like, I can't believe this guy. And my, my first instinct is to be like, no chance, man. Wish I could help, but I can't. And like a schmuck who can't say no, I wind up calling my buddy who owns the place. And I, he goes, listen, right now we're way overbooked. I mean, it's, it's like impossible to get in here. He's like, but we're going to be making our calls to confirm everybody's reservation that they're coming. He goes, and if people bail out, he goes, we'll get your guy in. I don't know why people do that to me. Cause, cause you don't you say, will no. Not say no. What's the right thing to say? You know that no. yesterday. That's I got it. a text Real from a quick. buddy. I got a text from a buddy. And then I'm not talking trash. I'm, I'm actually probably the right guy to reach out to that he knows. He's part of a college group or he's part of a group that helps call high school kids get into college. 
-hmm. they're doing a tour of the San Diego universities this summer. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, do you have a connection at the Padres for group tickets? Mm -hmm. And I was like, immediately like, no. But then I was like, wait, yeah, I have Scott who I could probably have reach out to like somebody like, so cause you're the guy that doesn't say no. And I didn't reach out to you because I know you're the guy that doesn't say no, but you're the first guy I thought of. Hmm. It's funny. I got a message um, from a very good friend of ours, Sergeant Alan Pena. Mm -hmm. And Sergeant Pena is getting ready to retire from the Marine Corps. And he's a monster Padres fan. And he's like, dude, I really want to retire and have my ceremony at Petco Park. And because I'm the guy that can't say no, I said, let me work on it. So I got a hold of some people down at the Padres. And I said, look, you got a guy here who's been an amazing Marine. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we really want to, um, we really want to take care of this guy. And I got this message back from the Padres. They're like, can't do it. Can't do it. And I'm like, now, wait a second. There's more to the story. Let me tell you a little bit more about this guy and, and, and why I think Peter Seidler would really go for this. They're like, no, we can't do it. He can do it on a day where there's not a game. He could do it out in the park at the park while there is a game but we can't put together a ceremony for a friend of yours to retire from the Marines at a Padre game. There's like hundreds of right military members, if not thousands at every Padres game. They're probably like, we're not going to celebrate one. Right. <laughs> well, that's the problem. Right. Is that, and that's probably why they won't do it is because they're like, but we do it's it very you. nice to offer to do it on an off day or in park in the park. That seems very nice. Yeah. Bruh, you know cool. why nobody asks me for anything, but people offer me things. Cause I say, no, I say no, and I mean, in, in the in the 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 way that people have come to know me as the the mean guy helps it mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, I know. I wish I was the mean guy. People know I'm going to say no. They don't even they yeah. don't even attempt to ask me. People offer me stuff all the time, but people don't ask me for anything because the ones who do, I'm like, oh, would I do that for you? No. Yeah, like they we have laugh, a really I laugh, we, we, and then that's it. We have a great friends listener. Uh, his name's Anthony. Shout out to Anthony. I don't. And he and, say again. I don't not Anthony Idol, although he's a great friends listener as well. Champ, what's going on, champ? Shout out back to wrestling. And, and this gentleman sent me a message that said, um, you know, I really would like to get an e-bike. He goes, but I'm I'm in a wheelchair. He goes, oh, what whoa. if they make a three. A three um, tricycle, like a tricycle e-bike. And it's I'm like, it becomes a go kart. And, and, and here's me rather than me saying, Hey, good idea. You know, like, um, me, I'm like, okay, well, I'll talk to them. I'll, I'll see what they say. Maybe they can. I don't know. For no, sure. they already make those. It's like those, little, I don't know. Those I little just, orange I just, carts that people rent any, and drive yeah, around. But right. But he wants an e-bike that goes 28 miles an hour. He's like, do that. well, I'm, I'm again, I'm one of these people that just can't say no. Motorcycle. Or you know, a motorcycle, no. my man. I know. A roadster. That's what they're called. Get you a roadster, my man. I just can't say no. You need to work. Can't on say it. no to. I know. Can't say no to people. Let me just start asking you for outrageous stuff. Mm -hmm. I do all the time. I think I will. for myself, yeah. enough for other people. I'm I mean, like Alex will say to me, "Yo, I need some bad bunny tickets." Right? Didn't come through. But no, I last. tried. I right. did work on right. it. I tried. It didn't happen for him. Because I don't think I don't. I don't. I mean, I'm trying to think. What do I be? I don't be asking for money. Anything. The last time you asked me for something was uh, you needed tickets to, to belly, up. belly up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, when Browner well, asked, he asked him like a day in, in advance too. Yeah. Right. Well, the other thing is, is that you know, it, it sounds <laughs> easy enough. Yeah. It sounns easy. Like, well, he's friends with the guys who own the Belly Up. He can easily get me tickets to the Belly Up. It's not quite really like that, you know, because you're always calling in a favor, which means you're going to have to return a favor. You know, so I'm yeah. the favor doer, but then I'm the favor giver. You have to host something. That's all good. Mm. You enjoy hosting free drinks. What free drinks? Where are the free drinks? When you host stuff, they get you free drinks. They do? I mean, yeah, I would hope. All right. I don't know. I was planning on talking about like the Angels today. I, I was planning on talking for? about the, the Dodgers and Giants. I don't know. I don't really even know why I was going to talk about this stuff. I really don't. I will tell you this. I do want to talk about winning time on HBO. And Brad Holland, the former USD coach, is going to join us. Stick around. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Hey, great friends, we welcome you back inside the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com, along with Grande and the Brown Man. This is Kaplan and crew, and we are stoked to have everybody with us today. If you're listening on 1090, awesome. If you're watching on television at night, 
We appreciate that as well. To all of our YouTubers who are involved in our YouTube chat this afternoon, glad you guys are here. And everybody listening on all the different audio podcast platforms at your own time, make sure you contact us. Tell us which day's show you're listening to. Get to us on Twitter at Kaplan and Crew. All right, guys, listen. Yesterday, we were having a whole conversation about the show Winning Time on HBO and how it's episode nine of 10 and how the characters are developing and how the storyline is changing. And there was a story, Alex, that you were bringing up yesterday about this young kid who walks up to one of the old veteran players. I was like, hey, I, I took your tape and your and your scissors from your bag and I just wanted to give it back to you. And the dude freaks out. I'm trying to remember the player's name. Uh, Haywood, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you said, Alex, that you thought that that character on the show was supposed to be Brad Holland, the former basketball coach at USD. I don't know for sure if that is or was not supposed to be Brad Holland, but I thought, you know what? Let's call Brad Holland. Let's talk to him. Let's find out what's going on. And here is the former coach at the University of San Diego, the former UCLA great, the former Laker himself. Here is Brad Holland returning to the airwaves of Kaplan and crew. Coach, good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing great. Scott, how the heck are you doing? I'm doing really well, Coach. Uh, lots of changes in life. I can tell you that over the last couple <laughs> of years. I didn't realize that you had retired and, and had moved out to the desert. Tell us about that. Yeah, so, you know, uh, I, was, I coached college basketball for 24 years and enjoyed that and then switched careers and uh, became CEO of the Boys and Girls Clubs of Carlsbad, which brought our family back to Carlsbad. We were at UC Santa Barbara coaching up there for a couple of years, but came back and did that for the last 10 years professionally, enjoyed that, helping kids and families. And, um, you know, through the pandemic and everything like that, um, you know, I, I thought hard, long and hard about just uh, retiring. And Leslie and I, my wife, uh, we decided, you know what, let's do it. Uh, we've always enjoyed the desert. Always wanted to live on a golf course and uh relax and play some golf a few times a week and i've been doing that now for about a year and a half so it's been a good move for us we enjoy it out here did you stay out there during uh coachella for two weeks and then stage coach last week <laughs> <That's a great laughs> it question. sounds like you're right in the middle of it all that's a great question we are in fact uh that venue the polo fields is probably less than a mile from where we live so it's been challenging to get around. If you want to go to the store, you got to go to a doctor's appointment. Um, the shelves at the stores are, are vacant <laughs> with all the kids and families coming in. But as you know, that's over now. But yeah, that was our first uh, Coachella and Stagecoach uh, um, uh, event that we've gone through. The, the previous year was COVID, so they, they had canceled that. So, But we survived. We got through it. <laughs> you get an Airbnb next year? Make your mortgage yeah, off right. three weekends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Go out of town, do something. Coach, no joke. I have a friend of mine who is a, uh, she was a longtime TV personality here in town. She has a house um, also like a mile from the polo fields, beautiful house. And um, she rents it out during Coachella. And for, I want to say three nights or four nights, I think she gets $20,000 for those oh, nights. <laughs> I need to look into that. <laughs> right. So what she, no, no joke. So what she does is she literally rents the house the two weekends of Coachella and stagecoach. And she says that she pays the mortgage for the entire year on three weekends. Yeah. I think a lot of people have, have gone that route and plus it gets you out of town. You make a little bank and, and everything's good. Yeah. You can go to the grocery <laughs> store. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Holland, do you stay in the La Quinta desert area even during the summertime? Yeah, we're full time. We sold our house in Carlsbad, Scott. And, um, our, our family is still local. We didn't want to move too far away, um, but it's really quiet out here. Really like it. Um, and, um, you know, the, the summers are obviously extremely hot, uh, but that's where we tend to get away here and there to break that up. But uh, we're full timers out here. Wow. Retired. Coach, I have to ask, you'll have to excuse me, but how old are you? I. Uh, I'm 65, just turned 65 in uh, December. So, wow, yeah. retired at 65. I mean, I'm, I'm 52 now, and the notion of retiring seems like completely undoable. Uh, <laughs> and at 65, I mean, well, really? you're 52. <laughs> I know, but I, but I always, I always looked at Dick Emberg, and, you know, Dick was still working until he was 81 years old, and he, you know, he died one day. 
Yeah, um, I know. But man, I mean, he, you know, man. even though he'd been done with the NCAA basketball tournament with CBS, done with NFL on CBS, done with Olympics coverage, done with Padres, he was still, Dick was still working hard and hustling. Now, most of this was passion stuff, but at 81 years old, it wasn't like Dick had slowed down. So I always think to myself, I'm like, oh, I'm going to be just like Dick Emberg. I'm going to be 81 years old and I'm going to be still, still working, you know? Well, he loved it right up until, you know, um, he, he retired there for a short time, but I mean, as long as you love it, right. You love what you Scott, do. you would, you remind me and Brad, you, I don't know how well, you know, Scott, but this, you remind me of like Tom Brady five weeks with the family. And you're like, I got to get out. I got to go back. To I got to get back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the short term retirement. Yeah. Short term. Like you wouldn't know uh, what to do with yourself if you stopped working. Mm, probably, probably yeah. so. That's probably right. <laughs> So what was the hardest, what was the hardest part about stepping away from it all? Cause obviously when you're successful as a coach, I mean, every coach is hired to be fired, but the success of coaching, the rush of it, the, 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 the being in the fight, what was the hardest part about stepping away from that? You know, I, I, there are a lot of factors, um, you know, giving up coaching like I did, well, gosh, it's like 12 years ago now, um, you know, before I, did the boys and girls club business, but you know, I've, I've, I've always told many people there's nothing like working on a college campus. Um, I probably miss that the most to coaching because, you know, it's, you know, young people, it's vibrant, it's a happening place, a lot of energy, a lot of positive energy. Um, that, that was difficult to step away with, uh, from let alone, you know, trying to, um, work with your staff to build the best team you can in that particular year, get them playing at a high level, um, that competitive uh, challenge. I, I miss that as, as well. Um, so those are some of the things that uh, were hard to step away from, for sure. Coach Brad Holland is with us here this afternoon on Kaplan and Crew, along with Grande and the Brown Man. We broadcast from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. So for those of you that are, you know, longtime San Diegans, you know that Brad Holland's story, and I'll just abbreviate my version of it, which is amazing player at UCLA, uh, great career playing for the Lakers, and then had, I mean, when you talk about the heyday of USD's college basketball program, the biggest wins in the biggest venues on the biggest stage of the NCAA tournament. Um, there was a buzz and an excitement about USD basketball years ago when coach Holland was still the coach. Um, and maybe who knows coach, maybe it'll come back. I'm just, before we get into winning time, I'm curious, any thought here on Steve Lavin now, a, a former UCLA coach himself taking over at USD. It's about time. I think they went out and hired a name guy, something they have not done since you left USD. Yeah. So uh, Steve and I worked together for Jim Herrick at UCLA. So I know Steve extremely well, and he brings a lot to uh, that program. Uh, certainly a name, uh, very experienced coach. Uh, he's a good guy. I, I think it's a good move. I mean, just his name and his background will attract uh, recruiting and open up some doors there that perhaps were closed to USD. Um, Steve is a high energy guy, very positive. Um, so he brings a lot uh, to that program. It'll be interesting to see how he does. And I say that because I know really, really well that it's a difficult job. Um, you know, it's very difficult to get kids in school and, and, you know, you have to compete against Gonzaga, St. Mary's, BYU, uh, Santa Clara, very established programs that um, are tough to compete against in the, in the recruiting wars and, and well as on the court. So he's got some big challenges in front of him. Um, but, you know, Steve is a very experienced guy, and it'll be interesting to see how he does. All right, we're talking this afternoon to Brad Holland, the former coach at USD, again, former UCLA star, former Laker player. So, Coach, you're watching Winning Time like we are, right? Yo, of course, yeah. I've watched all nine episodes. So you actually are watching them. <laughs> so you actually are watching the show, right? I am watching the show. Okay. Okay. Yeah. My kids uh, have been on Instagram with John Young, who portrays me uh, in the series. And he's been great to them. And, and uh, going back and forth with, I, I don't do Instagram, Alex. So that's why I'm saying that. <laughs> uh, but the kids have enjoyed interacting with him. 
And, um, you know, he'll update them. Oh, you got to watch episode nine and this and that. And, you know, the uh, eight and nine, I was uh, finally allowed to say something. So that was, <laughs> that was good to see. So, so the character, the, the, the kid who's like the young, fresh faced kid who goes to Haywood and says, Hey, I took your, your, your tape and your scissors from your bag. That's supposed to be, that's Brad Holland. That is me. That didn't happen. So oh, that didn't happen. No, that didn't happen. So what happened was, is that, you know, um, what was correctly um, depicted was that um, Spencer was going through a cocaine problem. He had uh, missed a practice or two. He would, he would, um, you know, sleep during a film session. I would knock, knock, you know, he was in the locker room. His locker was right next to me. What year in, in your career, is that this we're talking this about like my, this is my rookie, rookie year yeah I, so so magic was the first overall pick i was the 14th pick in the first round so we were that was our rookie year and um so this is the 79 80 season and um so spencer was going through some tough times personally with the drug addiction and what have you and he wasn't happy with his lack of playing time or his role on the team and and so um you know he was he was he was walking on tenuous ground, but the way he was uh, acting and how the drug was affecting him and game two of the world championship series, where we, we lost uh, to Philadelphia. We had won game one, but we lost game two and that was frustrating. And so we come into the locker room and I all game, I had heard him grumbling cause I'm, I'm on the bench. I got to play a little bit in that, in that game, but he didn't play at all. And he was upset and disappointed uh, of his role, like I said. And so we sat down um, and we just got into the locker room and he turns to me and he says, let me use your tape cutters. You know, we all got taped uh, our ankles and whatnot. And I go, please like that to him. And he stands up. Well, I have to say, please. And I don't want to use them. When I stand up, I go, well, that's fine. We're trying to win a championship here. And I'm sick and tired of your bad attitude. And when that happened, um, you know, Kareem, Magic, Norm Nixon, they all came around and said, like, Spencer, what are you doing? You know, because they all knew that, you know, he wasn't happy and he now he was acting out. So that that scene was not correct at all. That's not what happened. And, um, you know, he didn't shove me or push me or anything like like the scene suggested. If that had happened, it might have been a different outcome because I'm not going to. I'm not going to allow a guy to, to do that to me. So um, right or wrong. Um, but anyway, he didn't shove me, but it got kind of heated. And then an hour or two later, um, he was suspended. Um, there was no team meeting. Kareem didn't have the last vote. That didn't happen. Um, but um, Westhead and Riley said, all right, that's it. We're, we're done with Spencer Haywood. And he, he didn't, he was off the team the rest of the series. Let me ask you a question. We're talking yes. to Brad Holland Sorry. this afternoon. And Brad is a former USD basketball coach, former UCLA star, as he just mentioned. Magic was the first overall pick in the draft. Brad was the number 14 overall pick. And we're talking about winning time. Brad was on those Laker teams. Go ahead, Alex, pick it up from there. When you say he was gone from the team, was he just like totally kicked off the team completely, like nowhere around or just didn't play anymore? Like you're just on the bench and don't even say anything. Uh, yeah, he wasn't allowed to be around our team, so gotcha. he he was suspended indefinitely. And then, of course, he didn't he he didn't play another game for the Lakers the next year. He was he was out of the organization. Was that was that a massive massive media story at the time? It was. Yeah, I can it imagine. It was for sure. It was for sure. I mean, Spencer, you know, when Spencer was right, he was a very accomplished player, and I, I recall I think he was the first hardship case ever in the NBA. And um, he, he had a good career going. And I know that he was very excited to be a Laker and have a chance to win a championship, um, but he just didn't handle it well. He let cocaine uh, overtake him. And he, he's been very upfront about all this and, and has been in recovery for a long time now. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it made uh, huge headlines. I mean, you know, when, when, when a player of that magnitude with a team that's trying to win a world championship is suspended indefinitely. You can imagine the news coverage. Yeah. Hey Brad, um, the, the one guy who's been most upset 
about his depiction has been Jerry West and now has demanded an apology, a retraction, has threatened a lawsuit, et cetera. From your perspective, Jerry West, I'm assuming, was a, an important part of your career at some point. And, well, and I mean, relationship somewhere. Well, yeah, I'm just curious, from your all, perspective. I, and is, I told, I, yeah, and I told Jerry this when I became a Laker, how much I looked up to him as a kid and watched him play. I grew up in L.A. and my dad would take me to, believe it or not, the sports arena, mm -hmm. the old L.A. sports arena. That's mm -hmm. where the uh, Lakers played then. There was no forum. And, um, you know, I got to see – you know, Jerry West and Elgin Baylor and Wilt Chamberlain, all those guys. Um, so that's, that's how I grew up. And so I, I tried to pattern my jump shot after him. And I told him that. So, I mean, I got to know Jerry a little bit and I can totally understand um, how disgusted he is of, of how he was portrayed in this or is being portrayed in this docu-series. So um, I don't know what's going to happen uh, with the lawsuit or, him demanding an apology, but, um, you know, it, it, it's a shame to see how he's being depicted. That's all I can tell you. Well, let me ask you this. What, what's the most accurate part though? Like, cause I I'm watching this and I don't know the history and I'm not exactly doing the research to understand the history, but like, for example, um, did Westhead and Riley, were, was there really this conflict? Like McKinney's going to come back. We got the team to 50 wins. Westhead doesn't want to screw over McKinney, but Riley now has the, 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 the vibe for coaching. Like how, how accurate is some of that stuff? All those dynamics are correct. Um, for sure. I mean, Paul, Paul Westhead and Jack McKinney were, were best of friends. And, um, you know, I, um, I recall really well when Pat Riley, you know, went from the announcing booth with Chick Hearn and became our assistant coach at least me personally, after a week or two, I said to myself, this Pat Riley, he's born to coach. I mean, he just took to it like a duck on water. Uh, I'm telling you, he, he did all the scouting, the way he prepared us, the way he helped out in practice. And of course he had been a good player, played 12 years in the league. And I knew Pat from that standpoint, but, um, so you can imagine all everything that happened with the terrible accident that happened to Jack and then them taking over and, um, you know, getting the team, like you said, 50 wins. And, and I think we ended up what 60 and 22 before the playoffs, which was at that point, an NBA record, nobody had ever won, I guess, or at least a long time, 60 wins in a season. So um, they deserve some credit. And Jack McKinney was making a case to come back. And, and, but if you talk to Jack and you are around Jack, like we were from time to time post uh, the terrible accident, he just wasn't himself. There, there, there's no way you could say, Oh, he's ready. And he's himself. And I mean, at least the, I never felt that way. And, uh, but yeah, that was, it was a possibility of, of Jack coming back, but coach, uh, I shouldn't say coach. I mean, Jerry Buss made that decision in March. He didn't make that just before the, you know, day before the playoffs. This was three, four weeks before the playoffs where he said, okay, Westhead and Riley, it's your team. Did you guys have a say in it at all? The players go to Jerry or either Jerry or, and say like, Hey, let's not mess this thing up. Like we got, we got this thing rolling. We don't need Jack back. Was there, did the players have any say at all? I would say this to you, Alex, I would say that there was some, there was some uh, recon with players. And I, I don't know if, 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 you know, uh, Bill Sharman did it. I don't know if Jerry West did it, but I'm, I would, I would make an ed educated speculation that Kareem and, and magic were conferred on that and how they felt about, you know, Westhead and, and Riley uh, completely taken over. Um, I wasn't privy to that, but I would imagine that, you know, they would talk to them and see what they're, what they felt about it. Got about a minute to go here, Brad, do you have any more time? I mean, I know we've taken up a bunch of your time, but I'm now that I know how retired you are. I'm feeling like not as guilty about it. <laughs> yeah. I've got all the time in the world. Now you don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't mind, I would love to just ask you to stick around for just a couple more minutes because I know Browner's got a few things he wants to ask you. I still actually have some other questions about, you know, just, just about think about this and I'll, I'll hit the break and I'll think about this, your character, um, the way you were depicted in that scene, 
you say that's not what happened. You don't seem all that upset about it. You kind of, you've called it a docu-series. I wonder if you have an opinion about what Jerry West is doing, because on one hand, if Jerry would just let it go, I mean, he wouldn't be bringing so much attention to the show. He's like the best thing that ever happened to HBO. You realize that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Like if, if Jerry West didn't say one word, he would, there would not be as much attention focused on the show, but because he's angry about it and because it's turned into a big media storm, all he's doing is he's giving them everything that they want. So I wonder, are you as upset about the way Brad Holland is being depicted in winning time as Jerry West is contemplate. If you don't mind stick around, everybody, we are in the seven mile casino studios. Brad Holland is here talking winning time and we'll have more with coach Holland coming right back on Kaplan and crew. All right, everybody, if you're just getting with us, it's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. We're in the Seven Mile Casino studio, sevenmilecasino.com. Wherever you're listening or watching, YouTube, Channel 4 San Diego, uh, or maybe it's 1090 AM or any of the audio podcast platforms, happy to have you here. Brad Holland, the former USD coach, the former great UCLA player, the former Los Angeles Lakers is here talking to us about winning time. So, Coach, I asked you the question before the break. Jerry West is so upset about the way he's being depicted. Are you upset about the way your character is being depicted? Um, I, I wish I had more to say or I was allowed to talk a little bit more, be a little bit more involved. Um, but, y you know, I, I mean, I, I don't uh, – I mean, I'm, I'm being portrayed fine, I guess. Um, you never get to see me play, I guess, or, or say much, but <laughs> – um, I would have liked to have had a, maybe a little bit bigger role. <laughs> <laughs> hey, does everybody, hey, the uh, season's not magic, done. Right. Right. Magic was the first pick. I was yeah. the fourth pick, 14th pick of the exact same draft. Give me a little bit. I mean, in fairness, you know, I came off the bench. I didn't play every game, um, or anything like that, but I was a part of the team. And, you know, I always like to tell the story, Scott, of, you know, many people have heard me say this, but. You know, in game six, when we closed out the Philadelphia 76ers led by Dr. Julia Serving, in that final game at the Spectrum in Philly, you know, Magic and I combined for 50 points. He had 42. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. I'm, pr I'm proud of those eight points. Hell yeah. And, you know. <laughs> You, you're watching the show. You're following along. You see everything that's coming about the show. You see how much negativity they, they, they're getting for being wrong. What have they got right? That's a great question, Browner. I, I, I think, um, I think in terms of a production as very well produced and directed, I, I, I think that, um, the acting is fantastic. Uh, I, 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 you know, uh, some of the actors are, you know, I, I, I look at Jerry Buss, um, and, um, Pat Riley and Paul Westhead and, and, and Irvin, uh, the gentleman that that portrays Irvin, I think, are outstanding actors. Um, the actor that portrays Kareem, uh, I, these guys are are pros, and they they do a really really good job of that. And we know this is Hollywood, and a production is going to be over dramatized. Um, you know, those of us that lived through it. You know, we we're I think naturally we're going to look for inaccuracies. Oh, would it, come on. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. Um, that's kind of naturally where I go to. But um, it's been entertaining for sure and interesting and very well acted. Yeah, I'm Brad. I'm glad to hear you say that because I'm quite certain you're aware that Kareem wrote a column on his Substack page where he said it's boring. There's no character development, et cetera, et cetera. And I feel like I'm just a viewer who doesn't know the history and doesn't have the, the perspective that you guys obviously have. I'm just entertained about it. You know, I, mean, I just find the whole series to be really, really entertaining. I could see why you would say that because it is entertaining. You know, uh, I had a really good relationship with Kareem. Um, talked to him a couple of years ago about one of the books he wrote that I called him and said, what a fantastic writer you are. But I think we all understand, you know, Kareem is a very deep guy, high, highly intelligent, very intellectual guy. 
and a fantastic writer, by the way, author. And I can understand where he's coming from, that he didn't feel like there was enough character development of guys' backgrounds and how we all came together to form this great team and, and the beginning of, um, of a great Laker organization. And I understand where he's coming from on that, but um, I do feel like there has been some character development, some, some wrongly depicted, but um, like I said, I'm repeating myself, very well acted and entertaining for sure. Did you watch um, Magic Johnson's documentary series on Apple TV? Uh, yeah, I know that's on Apple Plus. Um, I I haven't streamed that yet. I will watch it, um, and you know I, I'm sure it's outstanding. I'm sure it's outstanding. Um, there, uh, I've been contacted by um, Magic Johnson's um, Enterprises. Um, he's put together a team reunion in Maui. That's going to happen in September. Wow. Super uh, cool. You got to go, obviously. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be all uh, it, guys from his five championship teams. I was part of one 1980, but um, yeah, it's going to be a very interesting um, get together for sure uh, out in Maui and, and magic had put this together um, a little over two years ago. And then the pandemic hit and it was canceled. Right. So it's back on board. And as he said in his recent um, letters, like, Hey, we're not, not getting any younger. Let's get together. <laughs> and, but it's a great gesture on magic's part. Um, Irvin's part to, to, you know, to, to, to make this happen, to get everybody together. I have a question about that. Um, if Ooh. I'm magic Johnson and I want to get together all of my teammates from my five championships and I've been as monstrously successful as Magic has been. Here's what I'm doing. I'm booking the hotels. I'm taking care of the flights. Like the whole thing is a Magic Johnson production. So my question is, do you have to fly yourself down there and pay for a hotel and pay? Or is, is it something where it's an invitation and you're, you, you know it's all being taken care of? Well, I, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn here. Um, but Magic is, is footing the whole thing um, out of his, uh, generosity. So he, he, it's entirely comped if you will. And you can bring your, bring your wife or significant other as well. So, um, I'm not going to tell you where, where it's going to take place, <laughs> but, um, you know, I will be obviously in the public eye. It's not like we're going to some private villas <laughs> where hey, coach, nobody, your, where coach. nobody can interact with us, but <laughs> it'll be interesting. Coach, you better get yourself into shape because <laughs> let me tell you something you take a bunch of guys that were as competitive as you guys all were 45 50 years ago right and you put them all together again a game is going to break out well i know a golf game is going to break out yeah, a basketball <laughs> game break out you might yeah. need some doctors around <laughs> yeah exactly is um, magic footing I, the bill for the medical expenses yeah, <laughs> right. well, torn you hamstrings know. that's about to pop up on this trip yeah so you know we we've been asked for our shoe size our you know short size or now i don't know if we're gonna you know oh. I, I i would imagine at some point everybody's gonna get in some sort of uniform <laughs> and, go, and, and go on to a court yeah um and have some time on a basketball court um, so that, that'll, that'll be something to see, I guess. <laughs> it, sure will be. it sure will. How much you got in the tank coach? How much you got in the tank? <laughs> What's that? How much you got in the tank? You pull I, somebody I, up. Yeah. Uh, uh, man, I, I promise you this there, everybody that shows up to that will not be in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I need two knee replacements. Um, we're all older. Um, I don't think I'll, you know, I, people, Oh, do you still kind of shoot the basketball? I said, yeah, once in a while I go into a gym and, you know, shoot. And I, I still can make a few as long as nobody's guarding me. Okay. Um, but it'll be, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to, to see everybody. And then also meet, um, meet guys from the other teams that I know of, but never really knew. So. That is really cool. Um, coach, if you don't mind, when the series ends this Sunday, gosh, I'd love to just kind of recap the whole deal with you next week again, if you're available. I don't know. I'm pretty retired now, so I've got a very busy schedule of, of golf 
and, you know, taking a nap each day and stuff like that, Scott. So Zoom no, works on the good. golf course, coach. Sounds good. Huh? Yeah. Zoom works go. on the golf course. We've, we've, we've talked to Charlie Hoffman on the golf course many times. Yeah. That's hilarious. That's yep. good. That's well, coach, good, so. it is great to visit with you. It's so good to see you. I'm glad that life is well for you and your family. And I'm, I'm really excited that you're watching the show and that you're loving it and that the Brad Holland character is a part of it. I think it's really, really cool. Well, thanks, Scott. It's good to be with you, Browner and Alex. And hey, if you want to get back together, let me know. Oh, we do for sure. Coach Holland, it is great to be with you. Have a wonderful day. And thank you so much for being here. You got it, Scott. Take good care, guys. Well, I'm going to say this right now. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about it. Big smile on my face. I haven't seen Brad in a couple of years. And um, to hear him talk about that he's watching the show, that he likes the show, that he understands its dramatization, to to know that he was drafted in the same draft with Magic Johnson and he was on those teams, um, to talk about what was accurate, what was inaccurate, uh, that was a really great conversation. I enjoyed that a lot. How about you guys? I'm so I think it's hilarious the way he described his eight points in that game six because I was going to ask him. I was like, Brad, you did score eight points in the game clinching game of the championship, and I'm so glad he did. He beat me to the punch. Yeah, him and Magic yeah, I like combined for fifty. Yeah, and Magic had 42. <laughs> yeah, Magic had 42. I don't know if you guys, I don't know. You know what, Scott? I won't spoil it for you since you don't know the history of what happened in that. Do you remember what happened in that series? No, of course not. Okay, I mean, so I won't I was, say First anything. of all, it's 1980. Right. And, you know, I was not. Uh, I'm not sure how, old. like, memorable it is in the in the memories of all-time championship performances Yeah, that Magic Johnson did in game six. So I won't say, I won't oh, say, say anything it. more. It's okay. I don't mind. Say it. Uh, Kareem got hurt. Kareem oh, did really? not travel to Philadelphia. Oh, so magic played center. Oh, right, right, right. Which is the setup. I just got chills thinking about the setup is in episode nine is that Kareem starts to teach magic the sky hook because mm -hmm. magic's working on it on his own. Right. Oh, that's so f I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah, I would never have come up with that on my own. But now that okay. you mentioned, of course, everybody knows the story. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, um, it's such a weird thing. because I don't mind spoiling things about this show because I feel like it's, 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 it's already done. It's real life. You know, it right. is what it is. The, yeah. So, but it, that's, you know, that's something I got from the magic documentary. They made a big deal about it. How Kareem didn't travel to Philly because he was hurt. He, he didn't even travel for the game clinching game. So when they clinched, he met them at the Burbank airport and they started partying on the plane. Cause Kareem was waiting for him on the strip at, in Burbank. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know, you said one thing to Brad Holland during that. You said, you know, I don't know how well you guys know each other, meaning Brad and I, and it occurred to me, you know, I met Brad in probably 2001 or two and i mentioned you know usd there were a couple of years where usd basketball was a bigger deal in san diego than san diego state was seriously mm -hmm. um usd had come up with some monstrous wins a couple of big wins in the ncaa basketball tournament and um, brad had given us just total access to the team i mean we were interviewing players on the buses as they were traveling to ncaa tournament games i mean the total access he just got it he just got it he just like he understood oh he got it yeah he, right. he did yeah yeah he understood that USD was small and that mm -hmm. we were giving them a lot of airtime and a lot of publicity. And we were, Billy Ray and I were always hosting USD basketball fundraiser events and so on and so forth. Brad was a super smart college basketball guy beyond just being a college basketball coach. So in the years that I worked for CBS doing the NCAA basketball tournament, I would, as soon as the brackets would come out, I would go meet Brad and have lunch with him. And we would go through the bracket that I was going to be calling so if i was was part of the midwest bracket and there were obviously 16 teams in the bracket he would break down every team for me so i would go to kansas city as an example and i was going to talk to this coach and this coach and this player and this player from teams that i didn't know but i was already prepared with tons of information tons of inside information about the coaches their program the players i mean he was a really good friend of mine for a long time you know and then when he went to the Boys and Girls Club, we always helped with, with that stuff as well. So and my Brad mistake, Holland's a great guy. Because I met him because was he an analyst for a college basketball analyst for a while? He did do some television work. Yeah. Yeah. He, or he like was did doing he do some Westwood TV One work. stuff or something? I don't think it was Westwood One. I feel like it was more local stuff. Okay. Yeah. I think that's anyway. why I met him is because he was on television and we asked him to come on to talk yeah. about college basketball. Browner, you're going to have to catch up, dog. See this series. I'm telling you, you're missing out, man. This is one of the best sports dramatization series that I can even think of, frankly. I'll check it out. I, no, he won't. No, he won't. No, he won't. But it's all good. Somebody somebody got an HBO Max account that Browner can borrow? 
I have it. I have oh. HBO Max. Then, then well, I can't believe you're not watching this with us. I already told you. He lived it. He didn't live it. He didn't live it. What you mean? In 1980, you were like not even born. What year were you born? 1981. <laughs> you didn't live it. My fingers are on the history of basketball, sir. No, no, no. no. You um, just you just got to this. You just got to the orange one. You're new here. Yeah. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, you and I have the same historical per- perspective on this story. I was 10 years old. You weren't even born. So, you know, I mean, the fact that you have HBO Max and won't watch the show with us when we sit around wa- waiting for Sunday nights. I mean, come on, bro. Hang out. It's with not that boys. I won't watch it. It's, see, you guys, you mischaracterize what I said. It's what is it? I won't saying? watch it. It's not what I won't watch saying? it. I need it to be over because I want to watch it all in 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 one straight line. Yeah. Well, in fact, last night, Alex, you'll be impressed. I watched two episodes of Ozark last night. Um, nice. Episode one of the second half of this season. Mm-hmm. Couldn't believe what happened. I'm on episode. I mean, I don't know why I couldn't believe it. What am I on? Episode 13 now. So what is that? Episode four or five of the, the last half. Yeah. Almost there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. Let's get to the highlight of the day, man. Because I'm like still like glowing after that Brad Holland conversation. That was really really fascinating to hear him talk about I just all appreciate that stuff. someone that's watching it and still disagrees with it. <laughs> I feel like we haven't met anyone on the team or anyone involved in the organization that disagrees with it but still watches cuz right. Jerry's mm-hmm. not watching. Yeah. He said yesterday, the way I'm told that I'm being portrayed mm-hmm. is not very flattering. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well let's get to the highlight of the day, man, because this is a big week for our friends at Tori Holistics. We'll tell you about that, but it is time now for the highlight of the day, man. It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. Highlight of the day is brought to you by Tory Holistics. Go to kaplanandcrew.com. You will see this month's promo code, which is mental. Mental. Spend $75 and you will get 20% off your purchase at Tory Holistics. Scott, are we not confirmed, but should we talk about Cinco de Mayo? Yeah, let me do this. We're not confirmed, but here's the situation. On Thursday, Cinco de Mayo, Tory Holistics is opening up a new store. It's called California Holistics, and it is in Chula Vista. We are currently, Tuesday, talking to Ruthie about Thursday about doing a broadcast from the brand new store on its grand opening. So it could be Browner down there by himself. It could be me down there by myself. It could be me and Browner down there together. We're still working out the final details, but suffice it to say, in all likelihood, uh, one of us, both of us, neither of us, either way, there will be coverage of the grand opening of the brand new store down in Chula Vista. And for everybody that's listening on radio or watching on TV or YouTube, um, again, if if Sorrento Valley has been inconvenient, they got a new one coming to Chula Vista. So if you're down in the South Bay area and uh, this is the best cannabis shop in all of San Diego and a new one is opening now down in Chula Vista. I'm willing to bet one of us will be there. One of us will be there. We'll figure yeah. it out. Browner, you want to go or would you prefer me to go? It'll probably, it'll probably be me because then if you get down there and something goes wrong. At, at best, it'll be the two of us. Mm-hmm. At worst, it'll just be me. I think, it, I think I would like to go. And the reason I want to go is because these guys have been phenomenal partners to the show. And I really want to be there to support them. I do. Okay, well then let's make it happen. All right, let's you do it. You guys both want right. to leave with goodie bags again. Well, that's just it. I mean, Browner left last time with four thousand dollars worth of cannabis products. Yeah, that's my be business. Real here. Don't tell my let's, business like that. All right, three thousand. So I'm gonna give you guys a choice. Do you want to do um Met Gala fashion or NBA on TNT fashion? Uh Met or NBA both. On TNT. <laughs> All right, let's try and do both. Go ahead, let's do All both. Right. Last night was the Met Gala. Which I still don't know what it is, and I don't refuse know what to either. look it up. I just know don't that know. celebrities show up and they're dressed in some, some Stupid clothes. clothes. Yeah. Not only do celebrities show up, athletes have been showing up yesterday. None other than Russell Westbrook, my favorite Laker. Mm-hmm. Everyone's favorite current Laker. He may not be there, but everyone's current form favorite Laker wore this mm-hmm. to yeah, the I Met Gala. This. It's a nice skirt that Russ has on. Uh, Top hat. socks. Yeah, they're they're very like the the socks look like something out of like the Wizard of Oz. He's got on this mm-hmm. long black skirt, this short sport jacket. Uh, I like the ice around his neck, and I love the top hat. So you can knock Russell Westbrook all day long for being soft because he can't hear West Brick, but that outfit is dope AF. Browner, would you wear that skirt? 
Next question. No, come I on don't back. like this look by Russell Westbrook. Yeah, uh, no. I know it's the Met Gala, but I do like Odell Beckham Jr.'s. He looks Odell very Beckham. comfortable. It looks like he's wearing like a green terry cloth bathrobe. That's yeah. sweet right there. Yeah, he looks like yeah. he is in Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yeah, dude. If I had if I had a choice between Russ or or OBJ, I'll take Russ. I, just I think don't, I just OBJ don't understand the affinity to, to dress men in skirts or dresses. I just don't understand it. I'll never will. I'll be the I'll be the enemy. I don't no, care. Right. No, no, the skirt for a guy it lets your balls hang. All right, cool. I doubt he's not wearing underwear under there. Mm. I already got quick and now a fashion on TNT. Can I can I call a fashion foul real quick? On 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 Chuckster. Okay, what what's going on? Stand up for just one second. <laughs> what's what's going tie. on? What's your tie? Come on, man. Come on, what's 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 up? Up? Come on man. man. Your bottom can't be longer than your top. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> you shoot me the way. Time out. You always ask me to do your tie. You did not ask that. me to do your tie. I did not do that, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It's a great shirt. Oh, yeah. Tie combo. A nice yeah. shirt. Come on. Come can't on. have this you short And then you come with ugly dog like cats. We get a close up on this, and it's like four inches to three inches. Come on, man. People at <laughs> That's funny. That always freaks me out when I wear a tie, which I rarely do. But you can't have the the back side of it, the skinny side of it, be longer than the front side of it, the right. thick side of it. But it's also yeah. got to be long enough that you could tuck it into behind the strap too. So it's like mm -hmm. there's right. a happy medium there. Yeah, that's right. All right. Well, listen, this has been a fun day. This has been a really fun show today, highlighted by Brad Holland. I hope everybody enjoyed that as much as I know I did. Uh, I'm sure it'll make for a lot of social media. Hey, uh, radio listeners, we're out of here from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Peace out, 1090 listeners. Everybody else, separate finish for you, and we are back manana. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. That's a fun day today. That's a really fun day. Yeah, that was fun. Every time I like, every time me, me and Brian start yelling at each other, I like it. Yeah, me too. Because I was a little, not going to lie, I was a little tired going into the show today. Didn't sleep all that great. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then once me and Brian start going, I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't even need this year, but Mate, let's just yell at each other. <laughs> yeah. uh, Browner has got people. It's so funny because Browner to me, I love all of his outlandish opinions that are never based in fact, but he's so confident in these opinions. He's average. Every pitch he's got is hittable. He's not worth this much money. They can replace him in a heartbeat. And we just keep coming back with, but here's the numbers that say everything that you're saying is wrong, dog. And he's like, it doesn't matter. I'm telling you the way it is. I love, the, I love the passion, dog. Yeah. Thanks. It's my favorite because, you know, it's something that we weren't really planning on talking about yesterday. So mm -hmm. Browner had to formulate an opinion on the fly. Mm -hmm. And now once he digs his toes in, this, this sucker's it's ain't moving. It's over. It's over. Yeah. So it's an on the fly Fight till the opinion death. that yeah. I may be proven wrong, but you will never see me proven wrong. I right. am right. You are wrong. Mm -hmm. Shut the hell up. Right. Can't 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 <laughs> wait. Can't wait. Can't till what? Till he's terrible. Till no, because now you're rooting against Joe right. Musgrove. Now you're rooting against right. right. yeah, now Joe said. Musgrove is like Otani. He's now See? rooting against Otani. See? And what and Joe I'm telling y'all right now is that this team will be elevated by the return of Clevenger and elevated by the return of Snell so much that the outstanding performance that Joe Musgrove has given you within the first five to six weeks of the season will be forgotten. Okay, they're 15 and eight, I, so they're going to elevate to like what? To just an I would say we're going to be about, we're going to be like <laughs> 30 and 14. Okay, I'm going to second most I'll, wins in baseball. They're going to they're going to be elevated to 30 World and 14 contenders. Okay, I'm going to make you a bet, Browner. I'm gonna see if we can make a wager here. Statistical season. Mm -hmm. Then Clevenger and Snell. You pick pick one. But that's difficult to that's difficult to argue because what are we basing the numbers on? Numbers. ERA, strikeouts, innings pitched. Like what all are we it. wins? Just just listen. All of, uh, I'm going to say this. Joe Musgrove will have a better year at the end of the season when we look back on it. Joe Musgrove will have had a better year than Clevenger and or Snell, and that'll be. Number of starts, ERA, strikeouts, wins, loss, et cetera, et cetera. From here on out? You can put out? all of it together. Yeah, from here on out. You can put it all together. Is, I would I would do ERA. 
I won't do wins because they don't necessarily wins are not a pitcher stat as a team stat. The only real thing that you can determine is ERAs and K's through nine and strikeouts through nine. Okay. Garbage. I'll do that too. Garbage. That's garbage. Um, I'm talking about like a, a all encompassing pitcher. Joe Musgrove's already ahead. Okay. But well, I'll start from here today going forward. Damn, we got I just pitch. want Rigby to make sure that he heard Browner said the Padres will be 30 and 14. Book it. And remember that that another hot take is every one of, of his pitches are hittable because he's not special. He's average. Yeah. Yeah. He's doing well. Cle Clevenger, on the other hand, he's special. Yes. After after 600 days off. Yes. That's what special is. Mm -hmm. We'll see. They, they'll wait 600 days for you. Mm -hmm. You get locked up, your woman going to wait 600 days for you. We haven't seen <laughs> Clevenger. We haven't seen Clevenger pitch without sticky stuff yet. So how's that going to look? Well, he had 600 days to figure it out. <laughs> That's what you mean. You Darvish is struggling since then. Maybe he hasn't figured it out. Joe Musgrove figured it out. Pitchers well, are different. Pitchers are different. Yeah, Joe Musgrove doesn't stuff, need man. sticky stuff. You're right. They're different. They're right. different. And we will see. We, we will, will see. see. Gosh, I but just now look. Now look. Now every, now Brown is going to root against Joe Musgrove. Never, right, I'm rooting against doing. Clevenger. No, I never, I'm, I'm, I'm now rooting that. against Clevenger. I'm now yeah. rooting against Clevenger. I'm not rooting Why? against Clevenger. It's because you're rude. Because no because what, what you just because what you did to Musgrove. Because of what you did to Musgrove. You're rude. That's why. That's hilarious. You're rude. You should come up with a nickname for Musgrove. You got a phony. Come up with something that's Musgrovey. Average Joe. Oh, your average Joe. Just your average Joe. Nice job. Nice Wait, job. All right. With that, that's a high note. Mic drop. Peace out.